I mean, if he if he is showing up now, he's he's getting it close. I'm about to start the the first jump. Oh. Oh look, there he is, right there. Hang on here. So. so what are you seeing that I'm not seeing here? And and welcome to the uh, um, Zen Bassmasters Arden Towing and Demolition, uh, week two of the journey of the Arden Citadel. And we are about to begin our series of five jumps to our next uh, location for exploration. And apparently we have a, a late comer. Yeah, hey, all right, excellent. You just made it, man. My gosh, that was close. Did you just now dock uh, Tianio? Is he, uh, no, he's not a voice yet. He he's not in the Discord. Yeah, okay, but uh, yeah. Let but, me go yell at him real quick. Okay, cool. Wow, Do, is there anybody else I need to wait for? <laughs> that was pretty close, okay. Let me go ahead and enter the uh, the first jump, and you know then we can get started on our discussion of uh, of how week one went. Let me get a caffeine for the uh, captain here. Mm. Diet Dr Pepper makes it all better. All right. Are you men on the right pills? <laughs> right. Fleet carrier navigation. Hopefully you made it here, or you're going to have a bit of a, a more catching up to do. So, we are going to open the Galaxy Map, and our first jump will be to this system, approximately 500 light years away. Can I, are you going to let me type? Wow. It's not. Why aren't you letting me type? Okay, yeah. All right, he'll he'll be a minute. He's in a phone call right now. All right. Let's try it again. You can't navigate the fleet carrier unless I can get to the board. Maybe you need to. Yeah, it's, it's probably the Kazenti uh, navigator again. Somehow he managed to make the trek from Star Trek Online all the way over here. Oh my God! All right. Yeah. Game's already starting out with uh, the challenges. Yeah, it's not letting me change any of these options either. Hmm. Okay. Maybe. Maybe you need to speak into the mouse. <laughs> computer. Hello, computer. Hmm. Acting like there's a stuck key. Yeah, very much so. I'm looking for that. <laughs> I do have a thought as to what it might be. That HOTUS that's been trying to kill me? That's what it was. The HOTUS. Okay. I don't need the HOTUS to fly the carrier, so ha! Victory! 498 light years. You sure it wasn't cheese? Uh, might have been. <laughs> okay. So the countdown to our first jump has begun. So let's exit uh, here and nice. So excellent. Yeah, it's it's glad to have you along, uh, uh, T there and. Hopefully you've had a chance to take the tour. If you just arrived, I, I totally understand just plopping down in the chair and going, oh my God, that's a long trip. Because we are currently about 2,500 light years out from the bubble, and at the end of tonight, we'll be 5,000 light years out from the bubble. So we have um, this first week, um, we've had about between, I don't know, 15 to 25 commanders that I know of have been involved in this. And not all of them are us, you know, this, this immediate group. Uh, it's, it's been other commanders that have, you know, come along for the ride. There may be more still that I'm not aware of, uh, but at least some of them reached out and, you know, to say, hey, I'm, I'm here, you know, don't leave me behind. So, so fair enough, you know, that's our plan. As long as you're uh, here at uh, 8 p.m. Central and Daylight Time, uh, when we make these jumps on Thursday, then, then you're in good shape. 
just like our friend with the with the Connie over there. So what I wanted to show is now that we've got this first week under our belt, we've had uh, several folks. Hold on, I need to give me kind of give me a holler if uh, if I talk over the uh, the countdown if it's getting close to well I'm, actually it'll put me right in my chair so I guess I don't have to worry about. Yeah, you've still got 13 minutes. Yeah. So I wanted to show some uh, screenshots that uh, some of the folks have taken and give them an opportunity to talk about it if if they're present. Right. And we'll see if this works. You guys on the, uh, if, if you happen to be watching the stream, if you'll uh, let me know if this actually is visible to you. And it may take a few moments to uh, for this to actually be, become visible. I see it. Okay, perfect. So I don't have to constantly save that change. All right. So... This actually wasn't a uh, screenshot of um, something that happened in exploration. This was a screenshot of something that happened, that happened to prepare for the exploration. Uh, this is a shot of the Ardent Wall, a uh, Type 10 Defender that's kitted for AFK ratting. Um, basically what that is is a, uh, it's a very uh, heavy duty ship, highly engineered, that is capable of surviving by itself. In, uh, in low res, low, ha low has res zones, you know, the idea is that you stack a bunch of missions to uh, to destroy a certain faction of pirates, and then go to where those pirates uh, hang out and just park the ship and walk away for eight hours, and it does the job. It, it takes them out. Uh, it's it's been very efficient at that. It's not the fastest way to earn credits, but it it earns the billions of credits necessary to purchase and equip this carrier that we're using now. So, you know, here's to the the Ardent Wall. And right now it's um, it is resting. It's a well-deserved rest sitting in the uh, in the hangar area right now for the day that we may need it again. Indeed. Now, Salute. Another, another shot to the wall. That's we actually had occasion where we had a couple of commanders would would hang out on the wall. That's actually Otis and Tia Neal and fighters. Uh, facing off there, yeah. But the wall would just sit there and blow things up, and it, it was quite spectacular. Uh, that's our intended route. Um, it may not necessarily be uh, clear on the screen, but at the at the bottom, the uh, yellow circle, that's the origin point in the bubble. Bubble being the 600 light year sphere that is civilized space in Elite Dangerous where you have lots of stations and people, billions and trillions of people, missions and such. Um, our course, we're, I don't know if you can see my mouse, probably can but uh, we're not that far from the bubble now. 2,500 light years in a galaxy that's 100,000 light years across, it's not that far. Um, we are paralleling the primary trade route between the bubble and a place called Colonia, uh, which is much closer to the core of the galaxy. Colonia is really the only other civilized uh, outpost of, of, of any extent that exists in the Elite Dangerous Universe. That'll be a 10 minute mark. I think. So, for a while, Paralleling that, we're going to be, uh, you know, encountering systems that have already been explored because others, other explorers, kind of wandered off of the uh, of that primary course, you know, to see what was out there. But the further we get away from that, the more likely it is we're going to come across things that are unique and that no one's seen before. Um, and as um, Ace Ace uh, mentioned earlier, even here, just 2,500 light years out, there were plenty of places that or first contacts, first discoveries for all of our commanders that went out there and you know, just took the opportunity to poke around and take a look. So it's it's good stuff and it's just gonna get better. Yeah, the one the one system that I've spent the past weekend, the one where I actually had to call for help but turned out I didn't need it because I blew myself up. Uh, seriously? That uh, yeah, I had to go back and restart halfway through my mapping process. But anyway, I, I went, I got to that system. I just plotted a course out, 
found a nice system directly up upward from where we are right now. Yeah, and yeah. somebody somebody had already gone through there, but they only mapped the start. The other 30 bodies within the system were all first discoveries, first maps, and for all the terrestrial ones, first footfalls. And for for that, you probably got raked in quite a bit. You know, eight, I eight got no, go I got almost a mil for that one system. Yeah, exactly. A decent system will get you a mil or two. And I think the the most I've ever gotten was like 10 mil, maybe 15 for one system, and it had crazy amounts of stuff in it. Earth-like and water and yada yada, but um, yeah, you know, when you find a system like that, then you can rack it up. It doesn't take take much. Uh, I had a one of the brand new characters uh, just did a little tour around the carrier, and like seven light years out, one of the closest systems to where we are now had a water world just right off the bat. So, um, which is you know kind of uncommon to rare. Uh, they got like a million and a half. All right, so uh, so yeah, I need to. I'll, we'll, we'll we'll continue this here momentarily. Um, so yeah, there there's a lot of profit to be made. Another interesting thing um, that's a holdover from the early days of Elite is the way that exploration works has changed uh, pretty significantly. Today you have what this uh, the full spectrum scanner uh, that you use for uh, system exploration. Let me turn this off. Okay, great. So we're back hey, to, Matt. to this. Yes, sir. Um, it's not on the stream. The stream is fine. But your audio on Discord is snapping, snapping, pop. Okay, hang on. So really what I need to do is uh, mute the Discord audio because you can hear me through the stream. Delayed. All right. Well, I've got the, the Discord. I've got the stream turned off. Oh, okay. But I, I, I checked the stream so that I would know if you were having trouble on the stream. Okay. All right. Is it is it intolerable on Discord? Do you which do you need me to uh, to take a moment to try to diagnose that, or, or can we continue? You're okay. It's just a little garbled. You just okay. got kind of a, a gurgle. All right. Well, we'll figure it out someday. Uh, I, I do have this yeah, computer doing a lot. You know. Yeah, I appreciate not bad. It. As long as the the stream is is clear, then that's that's I guess the most important. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to actually find a chair. Well, actually, let me, how much time we got? Yeah. Oh. Okay. A little over five and a half minutes. Yeah. So we're talking about the uh, Is there exploration any the fuel rat presence that way? The well, we can do that, and yes, the fuel rats will go anywhere in the galaxy that you need. They're they're really kind of an amazing group. Right, do you, yes. Are you out of gas? <laughs> what what's going on? What, were you just asking for a friend? <laughs> videos about them and I just was just curious if they were that far out or you know in that area or whatever yeah they're 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 um, known for literally going anywhere that anybody asks them to they have set up rescue missions that have involved uh, a couple of dozen of fuel rats to kind of chain to reach somebody that was just just in this amazingly obscure uh, unaccessible place far 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 away I mean, they, they do that sort of thing. That's To them, that's their challenge and their, their calling. Uh, and it's, I have never heard of a case where they've turned somebody down, except in cases where you're, you're dealing with a commander that has attacked and destroyed a fuel rat, right? They do have a blacklist. So, yeah, they, they basically, hey, I need gas, and, you know, that's their model is uh, we have fuel, you don't, any questions. So they, they keep it simple. There's they're, they're, a... Um... I rem my, my best story that I remember hearing about the fuel rats and that was the commander that was trying to get 
absolutely as far as possible from the bubble. So they jumped out as far as you could jump out. And then they figured out how they thought they figured out how much fuel they needed to jump back to to start their journey back. And they went out actually on drive. You know, to add more light years to the distance. And then when it came time to jump back, they did not have enough fuel to make the jump. Oof. Yeah, oof. And still, the fuel ranch found a way to get out there and you know, take care of business. And the reason why that would be important to an explorer who's made that effort to get out there is because of your exploration data. Carrier services have been suspended. So, um, it used to be, before carriers, uh, if you, people who left the bubble were completely on their own. You would go out and spend real-time weeks plowing around out here, you know, doing your exploration and finding the things to find. But if you got blown up once, you know, like, oh, this self-destructive, which, you know, is like, you know, like, you know. But if you got blown up, you lost it all. You know, weeks and weeks worth of work. That's where the fuel ranch really came into their own, because you had explorers out there that were trying to push the boundaries to go further and further and getting stuck, as, as one does. And, you know, fuel ranch would go out there and bail them out, and they would preserve their exploration data, which could be millions and millions of credits. So it was, it, they had that big heyday. These days with, with carriers, you know, people renting out of gas still happens. Um, and, and it's still that extreme case, but you know carriers have fixed a lot of that. You know, carriers can jump 500 light years, and that's made a lot of places that used to be unreachable reachable. So there you go. But yeah, yeah, there's still fuel rats, and you know zero seven to the fuel rats because they're they're pretty awesome. Um, now this so, is interesting. Yeah, I've got both characters logged in here. And the one that's in the one that doesn't have Odyssey. Mm -hmm. That they're both in their ships. That's why you don't see me. Oh, okay. But uh, the one that's in Odyssey, just you know, everything's going normal. The other one, the one that doesn't have Odyssey, I'm still seeing new contacts and contacts lost. Oh. Popping up. So I guess just a different way that uh, that the clients handle this. Four new contacts. What new contacts? Who? 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 Yeah, I'm. Well, whoever it is, they're getting left behind. <laughs> In thirty seconds. Here we go. I got half a mind to hop over onto the open play version of this and see who all's actually on board and jumping off whenever we pause. That's not a bad idea. You might, uh, yeah, if, if you feel like it, yeah, go ahead and give that a shot. That's what the chef for. Here we go. Three, two, one. Probably get the experiences in real life now. Once more under the brink. <laughs> oh look, a turn it. Oh yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, you have to be fast. There it goes, spinning off in the distance. It does kind of look like that effect, yeah. Yeah, all right. I never really thought about it. I, I got to the thought I had when I first saw this was great. Nice. You know, we see all this lightning and everything, and I'm wondering what it would be like if, while we're jumping if a lot of that hit the ship. Right? I think it is hitting the ship. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's coming off the ship. Is it coming off the ship? I don't know. Oh, 
boy. Well, some of it's off the ship, some of it's off the clouds. Nice. We are here. Whew. It's pretty dark where we are. Oh, I found the sun. Oh, there it is. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. Our parts right about it. Yeah, put on your suntan. Well, uh, suntan lotion. All right. So Everyone done your. Uh, well, there's a count down. Uh, cool down timer, rather. Let me check and confirm what that is. Navigation that's, that's, system map. <clears throat> that that's what I was uh, running into last time. Was I wasn't giving the carriers engines enough time to cool down. That's why we were having problems. With the oh. Hey, One, two, three, four. There's five suns in this system. Has anybody so, tried so. Um, using the escape pods? Uh, here's what they do, and then you can decide if you want to try it. It will take you to the last regular station that you left from. Oh God, that's five thousand. About five thousand light years that way. That's a, <laughs> that's a long time for a <laughs> Jeez. And you don't want to do that. It won't bring your ship with you, so you have to have your ship uh, uh, moved. And again, five thousand light years there about. So yeah, up to you. Yeah, uh, no, I'm good. Cool yeah, it's about a five minute cooldown. So that, that's what I was making messing up. So we'll we'll chill. While we're for waiting that. for the cooldown, I'm gonna go hop on my ship, hover above the pad, and hit the system with the old horn. And you were you were also going to go uh, check out uh, open and uh, see if there's actually anybody riding along. So uh, so while Otis is uh, well, actually we'll watch Otis uh, leave because it's always interesting to, to see somebody make use of the of the facility, the, the landing pads. Carl gets to do his job. Carl being our uh, our flight controller, who is seated behind me. There's Otis. Oh, you're in your crate now. Is that? Yeah, that's your crate. Nice. That's me. Oh, okay. Hold on. Well, hey, bring the Miami over to the uh, to the command deck so we can see that uh, paint job of yours. Okay. Yeah, you can Please. see it from there. <laughs> like Jesus. Okay, here we got a couple others taking off here. Um, so the big one is the, the that's the Connie, that's got to be TNEO. And then uh, that one off the right has to be Otis. So. Little plane established. Six bodies discovered. That's some nice paint you got there. You do have your crate, so I was, I was wondering if you're going to stick with your uh, Diamondback Explorer, because you did put a whole hell of a lot of work in that guy. I did, I did. But uh, if you can see, yeah, it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to make out the details, but you can see it glowing. Uh, that's uh, Tyus's uh, ship off to the left there. And then you have uh, Otis is in another crate, same class, just a paint job off to the right. And we had uh, the Anaconda. Does your Anaconda still name the Rocinante, or did you? Did you change? No, it's still name? the Rocinante. It's still yeah, the Rocinante. Yeah, right. You should see me out the window. Um, yeah, you're all three kind of. <laughs> Those are not small ships, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see the Miami very clearly you know, with the palm trees. I, I love that paint job. That's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty good. I suddenly hear the Miami Vice theme Look down below him. Right look down below him. You could see Mr. T O'Neill down there. Yeah. yeah he's somewhere he's over right there. there. Yeah, he's right there. Um, oh, he's now, dark. He ain't got no lights on. You can see the thrusters on the Connie. The Connie is is massive. It's a uh, like the size of a football stadium, 150 meters long. Think think larger than a Corellian Corvette from Star Wars. Don't hey, want the D give us a profile view, if you will. I still want the yeah. Federation Corps. 
It's that's pretty massive too. So we're we're gonna get a top down on the on the Connie here. That's that's the Anaconda top down. And yeah, it's it's dark from here, so we we're not seeing anything. But I don't think the lights. Huh? Well, the lights will blind me. It, yeah, I saw you turn them on. Yeah. Yeah, I can see the whole ship. It's it's blinding the ship. Yeah, but <laughs> you can see all the detail. There you go. You see the the Connie has a lot of depth to it too. It's probably you know if you were to give it a building, it's like a seven eight story tall building. You know, just in height, so not counting the length of it. It's pretty impressive. And the crates, yeah, they're pretty substantial too. I think they're supposed to be something like 50 meters long. Yeah, I think so, yeah. All right, so while you guys are uh, docking back up, let me. I'm not going to actually lay in any coordinates until everybody's back aboard. Yeah, let me redock everything. Right? Yeah. Because I, I do not want to leave anyone behind. Now we're pretty far away from the bubble. We're going we're going to be much further before we're said and done. Oh hello. Okay, wait. To the light. Did no, I notice? <laughs> I think he's over there buzzing the uh, the bar right now. Quick, Otis, meet me at the bar. Oh, that's why I'm being so sluggish. I forgot I still had my landing gear down. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Well, crunch. somebody beat us to the punch. Oh, how so? Well, I went ahead and turned it in, and I didn't get first claim on the system. Oh, really? So who was it that uh, they got first claim? Well, we'd have to go out there and look at it. Yeah, never mind. Let's see if I can... Like I said, you know, there are others uh, following along, and, you know, they they know the timetable that uh, they have to meet. So I think that's T and Neil, that's uh, Ty's aboard, just waiting on notice. You plugging my phone up, my phone just died, and that's what I was using to view the stream with. Oh, okay. I see the Connie's going below. Bring it to the dark. It is kind of dark in the hangars, yeah. Yeah. What the? Buzz the tower one more time. Yeah, here it goes. Don't buzz the tower. Don't crash into it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I do like that. And you leave your trail behind. So yeah. Contact request docking. Contact request docking. Earl says, "Okay. You didn't destroy the control tower, so you can dock." Doesn't say who discovered it. It, it won't unless oh. uh, you, you actually get out and scan something, and then you'll see, you know, discovered by. But uh, well, let's let's move on. You, we're going to have stars. Uh, There's nothing it is anything. not smooth sailing. Apparently, I don't have a advanced docking module on here. Really? <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, now we're going to talk with this one at least. Yeah, now we're going to get to watch Otis, um, well, crash land, um, intentionally. Oh, come on, it's a lot easier to do than it is to some of the stations. Especially yeah, with some yeah. of the people. Are... No slot to get through. It's, it's, it's like the old, uh, you know, those static platforms where you only have medium and small pads. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. I'm parking on the right side. Yes, you are. He's coming, coming in. He's, he's making it happen. See how, see how it goes. There's almost, almost, almost centering, centering, centering. Did it. 
Okay. Uh -huh. You're there. He did it! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it was a fiery explosion. Not yet. Now wait till he gets to the hangar. Yeah, it's a boom, then it blows up. And oh. bye bye. You gonna lower me or what? There we go. Yeah, yeah. Carl's just making you wait. As long as we don't stay in the Thargoids. I don't know. Uh, the carrier might be able to at least hold its own. I, I'm not sure how that would work. It's an indestructible object, so no matter what, it's still good that way. That's right. So we're going to go to this system next. I need to mark this one off. Make sure we don't jump backwards. Okay, this one's next. Galaxy map. There. And there. Looks like we're going in the right direction. Okay, confirm. That's correct. C2724. Set carry destination. Countdown begun. Have you reached well, that's what it was. I, I was not... I was being too impatient with the carrier jump sequence. Uh, last time we did this, I was setting in these waypoints 500 light years about, and it wouldn't let us do it. So I kept trying systems that were you know, shorter range. And No, no, no. It, it's just that the carrier needs a little bit of time to rest. So... Or else you'd be able to do jumps over and over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or I sure. disembark. I'm going to go here to outfitting. I'm going to slap one of my spare modules on here. Because I did a smart thing, and I bought a few of them in bulk and just kept storing the extra ones. Yeah, yeah, because we don't have a, a lot of supply here. So, yes, that, that was a smart thing. Uh, Especially okay. since it seems like advanced docking computers are far and few between. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the the problem with um, with stocking on a carrier is you can't purchase the exact things that you want. Uh, for example, if I'd been able to choose which modules I wanted to provide, yeah, advanced docking computers. But you can't do that. You had to buy them in lots. And the lots are pre-configured, so an advanced docking computer is bundled with a whole bunch of other stuff I don't want, and I'm ending up paying hundreds of millions of credits, most of which is stuff that are just going to lie around and take up space. So that it's clumsy, and it, it makes it for kind of an inefficient system to, to stock a carrier. That's why we have some ship types that nobody's ever going to use, like a whole bunch of sidewinders, right? That I doubt people will purchase, but. It, alongside that, you know, came the uh, the uh, the cobras and uh, which people will use, and the and the adders which people will use. Uh, so you had to buy these lots, and eh. but I got enough that uh, as people want to fit out basic uh, mining ships and basic exploration fits, they can, uh, but they just can't optimize it because we don't have access to engineers and we don't have access to Class A uh, frameshift drives and stuff like that. All right, so oh yeah, um, more screenshots. So again, all these screenshots uh, in in this batch are f taken by uh, commanders on this last week worth of uh, discovery, and this was uh, one of the commanders found a a ring system around an icy world, and this was part of what's going on here is. We're interested in tritium, so uh, folks are out there looking for icy rings, and if you have the capability to uh, scanning them with a detailed surface scanner to see if there's a tritium hotspot or two or three. And those, uh, any icy ring can have them, so even ones that are around relatively small objects. So it's not a, uncommon to, uh, to see um, a planet with a ring system, but you, uh, when they're particularly Thin, sparse, and far away, they kind of look like that. They're they're not uh, they're not very brilliant, like you see some of the gas giant rings that are closer to their parent star. But they they and, and they're actually they actually prove a point about rings. You can see stars through that ring system there, and that that's just to kind of prove the point that all ring systems are not solid. It's, they are, in fact, composed of trillions of um, 
large rocks that are just kind of huddled together you know, in a common orbit uh, around their uh, parent body. And you indeed, you know, if you don't have other lighting effects reflecting off of those rocks, and the more albedo, you know, the more reflective they are, uh, the brighter that reflection appears to be, you can see through them. There's a danger in that, because I've actually run into ring systems in dark systems that I was that I didn't know were there and just got pulled out because I just rammed into it. It was, you know, an invisible wall. So that's just uh, that's just a demonstration of uh, one of the interesting things about ring systems. Let's see what else we got here. Um, yeah, several commanders came up with um, close orbiting pairs, and this is a fairly common phenomenon. It's hard though to get one that that's photogenic, and I think a couple of uh, of our commanders did. Uh, what you're seeing here is there are two. They can be two rocks, icebergs, what have you, but they have to be um, co-orbiting each other around a common center of gravity. That's our 10 minute mark. So if one or more, both of them is landable and they're close enough, then you can do this. You can, you can land on the one and see the other from the, uh, from the one you've landed on, you know, as a, as a moonrise sort of situation. And it's, it makes for really great uh, screenshots. I think we have another couple of those in here. We'll see. Um, a touch binary. So this is the bane of Otis's life, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. Um, you'll have, this is a fairly common occurrence as well. Um, stars, active stars that are almost touching or very close. You know, one, typically one is smaller than the other but they're co-orbiting each other because they're so massive they have a common center of gravity that's outside of both stars you know so they kind of spin around um, that's what's called a, a touch binary they're, they're just super close and if you were to see this you know in astronomical terms it would be much I think it'd be a bit more spectacular even than this because you might see gas exchange going on between them that sort of thing but what happens in game terms is if you get too close to a star, you begin to cook. If you get too close to two stars, you begin to cook faster. And that's, that's not a comfortable place to be. Um, back in the day, it was uh, the explorer's bane, and this is why everybody carries heat sinks now, that the frame shift drive would occasionally, in the case of touch binaries, it would drop you at what he considered a safe distance from the primary star but was not a safe distance from the secondary star and you begin to cook immediately and the more stars in system the more likely this was to happen um, there are some systems and I think to this day are still considered death traps because you you go there you die uh, I, I'm trying to remember it's a hip something or other that had five stars in close proximity and it would drop you right in the middle and there's just no escape Anybody who went there died. So, heat sinks. Heat sinks will get you out, out of there, and that's why you have more than one heat sink launcher, because you might be in a situation where you need to actually fire off both of them in sequence in order to uh, survive long enough to get away from the heat of whichever star you're close to. So, there, there is danger when it comes to touch binaries. The difference today is a patch of a couple of years ago they, uh, they set the frame shift drive stop sequence to attempt to drop you at a safe distance from both stars so that it'll drop you from to, at such a range that you're not going to be cooked by either one. That works, I think, 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, but I, th I still hear that occasionally people will get in too close and get cooked. Otis does this on purpose. Otis actually says, hey, I see two stars. I'm going to drive between them. That's a daredevil in him. That's a daredevil. So I actually got out and did some mining. Um, we we do need to uh, to mine to the extent possible, you know, some tritium and, and keep trying to top off the tanks. Yeah, it's not a big deal right now. You know, we have plenty of reserves, but you know, at some point we're gonna get to the point that we just need to lay over a week or two to to, to top the tanks. But it turns out that uh, that's, an, that's a Type 7 that I, uh, 
kit it out for for mining and it does an adequate job it just it takes a while so it's a it's a patient man's game to uh, to pull out tritium and probably one thing we might do when we get to the point we want to mine seriously for fuel is do it as a group because I think with um, with, I, with some of the bigger ships that have larger mining lasers, um, more they're more capable to, to strip off minerals. And with all the people there collecting it simultaneously, you could just kind of plow through a field very quickly with a group, but rather than trying to do it solo. I got the Rasinata set up to mine and everything. Sweet. Okay. And, I sadly and found I got, out it certainly has a certain. Uh, it only goes up so much though for the mining lasers. Right. Um, and I have a Type 9 uh, set up here that has, uh, you know, the faction mining lasers, the mining lances? Yeah. Uh, it has a bunch of those. And so it just strips asteroids away. And as long as there are enough uh, collector lipids out there to gather up the bits, we don't stop. We just keep going. So th th there's potential in doing this as a group. But I don't, we're not there yet. You know, it's going to be several more uh, jump sequences before we actually need to worry about that. Uh, all right, maybe get one more screenshot in. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. For some reason, um, kept finding Mars-like planets. You know, planets that had a reddish tinge to them. Because that's—I don't know what that was. I, you know, every time uh, would land and take a look around. You know, in, the, in many of the worlds that had life readings, they'd end up looking like this. Uh, it was a uh, red red sand or uh, you know, dirt and kind of a reddish huge sky but I was uh, just happy they do you go ahead I said I was just happy to find Hoth <laughs> yeah yours is in here you know we'll, we'll get to that here in a bit but I thought that was interesting that you know there seemed to be so many of those okay yeah we got to go sit down then. so let's yeah let's I was like I think every every system I jumped into and scanned and everything, it was always like either a really dark red planet or a really brown planet. And sometimes it made me think of brownies. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. You know, there was a that's that's uncommon actually. I, I with the other uh, the other exploration trip I did recently with the uh, with the Ardent Dream that cutter, it, it was not like that. Okay, hold on. Yeah, the, I guess I need to show the uh, show the captain in action here. I can do this. There he is. He's been. Uh, there. He's been trying his damnedest to uh, to interrupt, make a mess of things. There. There you go. Big yawn. Big yawn. How you doing, bud? Okay. Try not to blow up the carrier. <laughs> One good swipe, and we're all screwed. You see, the, these are the danger legs over here. This is the leg that takes screenshots all the time, right here. You know, it'll, it'll stretch and click, click, click. Yeah. with how um, this has gone so far it's been exactly kind of what I hoped it's it's not you must go out there every night and you know get your quota of exploration it, no no that's not what this is this is a fishing trip you go out when you feel like it and if you don't feel like it you don't go out and so people have when they've had time or the inclination just wandered around and saw the sights and I, and I hope have had the same experience that I do, which is I find this all terribly relaxing. It's, and, and very interesting, too. You know, how you, you'll occasionally, not every time, but you occasionally find something just beautiful. And that's when you park and take a look and take pictures and try to share. Uh, and sometimes you'll find something that just is, okay, I've, I've seen this system with nine icebergs you know, a lot before. You know, there's, it is a pretty common sort of thing. That makes the times that you find something unique all the more special. So, I have a feeling that the further we go out, the more likely it is that we'll find those unique things because others have not. 
the ultimate goal here is to go to um, the Perseus arm, which is a relatively unexplored area. Not many commanders are out there right now. I think I looked at the... Uh, I've ever been out there. Yeah, it's um, basically 90 degrees. Uh, if you look at the galaxy top down and you rotate 90 degrees uh, from the, the bubble, the same distance from the center, that's the Perseus arm. And I think I looked at the EDSM commander's map and there were uh, a half dozen commanders in that whole like 20,000 light year area. So it's it's a good place to uh, to go fishing, I think. Not it hasn't been picked over so much. On the way there, we're going to hit some spots that are uh, a little different. No, thirty seconds. Yeah, we'll talk about. Watch our second jump here. I'm stuck in my cockpit. I was running towards the elevator when it hit the three minute mark and put me back in my ship to sit there. Well, I wasn't sure it put me in timeout. Yeah. Red light. Well, the jump sequence is even louder down here. <laughs> hey, you're, you're in the spot where it's getting hit by lightning. Yeah, sure. You're in the danger zone. What I like about the, the jump sequence from a ship is that you get that that uh, that dilation effect. You know, it's, you get longer, you get shorter. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. This is looking interesting. See the, the local star, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, immediately Otis is like, I'll go see. Explore! <laughs> Same deal as last... Uh, okay, hold on. That, that's my... Navigator has decided to change the camera view on us. Hang on. Yeah, we're right above the star again. Hang on, buddy. I want to look out the window. <laughs> Let me just get away from Citadel real quick. You're okay, bud. Go into a low speed super cruise so I can hit it with the FSS. See what we got hanging around. So, um, so on the way, uh, we were talking about this uh, course that we're taking. It's a lot of folks that, uh, that do exploration follow the galactic spiral arms. And part of the reason of that is just convenience because there are more systems to explore and it's also safer because there are, you don't, you're not likely to run out of gas uh, by following along in stars that, that there's constantly red dwarfs everywhere I hate well, those we're... I hate those runs so much <laughs> man <laughs> so what we're doing is um, part of the trip is going to take us through void spaces it's not as bad as it sounds basically what that means is there are spaces between spiral arms where there's not as much stellar density but also the uh... oh yeah me too and it's also keeping him out of trouble because he's he's kind of curious about okay what what's 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 with the camera? <laughs> okay, big yawn, big yawn. Yeah, okay, you chill, bud. So, the um, 
yeah, the business about void spaces is they're not as mu as well explored for a couple of reasons. One, they're they're not as safe to explore, and they're also harder to explore. And that's going to be, unfortunately, it might be a problem for some of our newer commanders, you know, that have the shorter range ships, um, because there may be places that require a jump range in excess of you know 15 to. Uh oh, hold on, he did it again. Okay, watch out, bud. You're okay. At least we're not out in the ship and you're not firing off heat sinks and stuff. Uh, there might be something that requires a jump range in excess of 15 to 20 light years, you know, in some places. And hopefully we don't hit a spot like that because I'm, I want there to be something for everybody to explore. Uh, but we'll see. We'll have to see when we get there. And there won't be, you know, it's not going to be like that the whole trip. Just maybe like four or five stops will be like that. Uh, he's, he's moving the camera around again. What are you doing, buddy? Alright. So we'll wait for everybody. I see you to landing get, there. Get dot back up. That's uh that's the Rosinante. That would be Otis. What what's the your ship's name there, Otis? Zealous Champion is the name of this one. The Zealous. Okay, the Z Champ. Right. The, the cat <laughs> Okay. He got tired of me. Messing with his, uh, playing footsies with him. Okay, over here, bud. Yeah, there I just go. got two. I got the Rasnada, and then I got my Sidewinder, the Angel Dust. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about the camera, buddy. Don't worry about the camera. Uh, uh, okay, now, I, now he's now he wants to chew on the commander. Yeah, all right. You're okay. Cargo. And I know that, uh, let me turn around here. Now that I have control of my mouse again, never so briefly. That uh, Ty's uh, ship name is the uh, Miami, as uh, as evidenced by that uh, paint job. Ah, oh, come on, cat, buddy. Okay, so I see the uh, the champ is just uh, docked. Is, is anybody else out there? I don't believe anyone else is, and this system is pretty boring. It's just two suns, and that's it. It's so right. depressed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're gonna. If I can, is it gonna work with me? Yes, it is. Okay, buddy. I okay. I would pull out the Avalon's gate to show it off, but it doesn't have cargo racks on board, and I have cargo that needs to be transferred that can't be sold here. Oh, what is it? I, I might be able to set something up for that. Uh, let me look. I can't remember. I know one of them is a unit of narcotics that I found at a wreck site. Nope. Not gonna buy that from you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your yeah, problem I'm just, now. Yeah, I'm just gonna dump it somewhere. But the other things that I have are... Once I get over to my inventory, I've got... Aside, aside from the narcotics and the three units of personal weapons that I also found at the same crash site, it was a drug runner, I guess. I guess so. I found one unit of indium, one unit of palladium, and one unit of moissanite. Yeah, I might set something up to buy the minerals, because that's something we can sell you know, for carrier upkeep later. Yeah. Um, but, but I don't want to carry a lot of cargo because one of the things about the carrier is it's got a significant cargo bay, you know, 25,000 units. Uh, but, but it it's costs fuel to move fuel. all that stuff. Yeah, right, exactly. And, um, well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it later. And, you know, I don't want you to have to carry that stuff around with you because it's, it's cutting into your jump range. You know, it's your jump range as you're hauling it all around. Yeah. So. All right. Well, everybody better be back aboard because we're proceeding with our countdown. Kind of a good thing the uh, every ship that we have docked with the carrier doesn't affect the jump rate either. Either. Yeah, I don't think it does. I, I think they don't actually take up any any space on the uh, for fuel purposes. Oh, big stretch for the cat. So, is, is he, are you done with me, or are you just repositioning? Him? I got to figure it out before I go on to something. He's repositioning. All right. <laughs> Hang on, buddy. I gotta keep you away from that mouse because I need it. I know you want to lay on it. That's literally what the cat's trying to do: is go over to the mouse pad, and, you know, go to sleep. Oh, let's see here. 
Okay, so we uh, we have some more screenshots to show. So if I can uh, get to the control, man, difficulties, technical difficulties, all named after cat. This is Oracle, by the way, for those uh, for those watching. That's the button I want. So this commander got stuck in the mud. This is Mud World, and uh, yeah, apparently landing here uh, offered some difficulties. So nothing that uh, they couldn't recover from, but yeah, when you when you get your ass explorer stuck in the mud, it's always a bit embarrassing. I'm not sure even the fuel rats would be able to handle that. Yeah, man. Wow. Okay. You were you were sleeping peacefully a minute ago. Hey, come on, Bill. What are you doing? So that's another view of uh, stuck in the mud, suitable for uh, for a cell phone background. One interesting thing I, I I've always liked is how the they have worked on and improved the lighting effects. Still not perfect, and and in fact they had some regression uh, in Odyssey. Uh, mostly about as you approach a planet, you, you may notice the lighting kind of go back and forth and kind of semi-randomly. Uh, but when you actually get into atmosphere and see some of the atmospheric effects, it's just wow. You know, it's, it's amazing. Some of them are just drop dead gorgeous. Like that. That's our... Uh, that was our feature photo from our uh, Zen Bassmasters uh, article. It was showing a plant and, uh, and the star in the background there. The, um, this is what you're missing you know, for those that don't have Odyssey, is uh, the ability to find life and, uh, <laughs> well, tear it apart and, rip and, and extract this DNA. You know, we come in peace, stand still while I take a blood sample. Um, so, unfortunately, you know, they haven't, I don't think they've fully developed it to its potential, so you come across some, a lot of repetition uh, when it comes to the forms of life that you find. But, but it's still an interesting exercise because they're hard to find sometimes. And it's an interesting uh, trip around the planet. Um, those of you that, have, that watched the previous exploration stream may remember George Washington's Nose World. That, that was an example of something, you know, it started off like an adventure to try to find uh, a sample of life and turned into a two-hour two trek trying to escape from a mountain range because I couldn't get the ship to land there. Yeah, there's another shot of our, uh, of our plant uh, with the Milky Way in the background. Oh, he's, he's gotten bored with me, so he's going to go off and terrorize uh, something else. Have you ever noticed that the hubs of the wheels on the SRV are actually thrusters? Yes, 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 yes. And and you have a thruster. Uh, man, let me go back to that. You are correct. Um, there, there is, there are thrust controls for SRVs. Uh, you can get short jumps, and you have um, the ability to control it while in flight, like a ship. Yaw, pitch, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, all, all that's in the key binds. You, know, you can you can see how all that plays out. Uh, all right, so yeah, the Oracle's done with this for now, so I guess I'll break your camera with my face for, for a little while longer. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, let's see, we're gonna go here. All right, this is hard to see, uh, but what you've got here is uh, an ASP Explorer in the foreground, and very dim. On the kind of the left, if you follow the horizon, you'll see a little ball, and that's a water world um, that this um, moon is orbiting off in the distance there. And I think they have a few shots of this uh, water world, but it it turned out to be a lot of water worlds seem to have atmospherics going on, storms, ice caps. This one was just you know blue. <laughs> you know, it's it's the big blue ball in the sky. That happens too. Yeah, there's a better shot. You can actually see it a little bit more defined against the light of the Milky Way. 
There we go. That's nice. So water worlds are one of those things you're looking for. Uh, they're they're almost always beautiful. You know, they're just pretty gorgeous to behold. But they're also valuable in terms of uh, exploration data. You know, discovering, first discovery, mapping, all that stuff. They they bring in a lot of uh, credits. It's another shot of that. Uh, barely see it again. Cookie dust. Yeah, cookie dust. That's a heck of a name. And that's our. Uh, that's the sun that that water rolling moon is orbiting. Just kind of peeked over the horizon there. Carrier jump sequence is underway. Lockdown begins in five minutes. Okay, this was um, Ace, I believe. Um, and he uh, he brought in a few uh, screenshots. This was, I think, his first experience with a with a close binary system. You have a a brown dwarf and what looks like a K class K, you know, right there, dead center field. Um, they're very bright, <laughs> you know, when they're in your face like that. Yeah, and I suppose it's that same uh, class K. This may have been in one of his uh, first attempts to field scoop because you know, if you've never done field scooping before, yeah, it takes a little bit to figure out exactly how not to, uh, you know, singe the ship too much. Got to find that sweet spot. That's right. Um, oh yeah, ring systems. So um, it, this was, I think, Ace's first encounter with a uh, with a ring around a gas giant, and they're they're almost always beautiful to look at I think occasionally you'll find something unique a very large ring system a very uh, different I think um, in here somewhere I've got your screenshot Otis about a ring that was around a, a brown dwarf you know a really thin ring that was far away from it um, and that that was very that was a unique find I don't think I've seen like a half dozen or a dozen rings around uh, brown dwarfs and you know they, they're just not that, that common but they always seem to be oversized, you know, something you, different whenever you do find them. And yeah, this is another close orbiting uh, pair. Um, so I think he actually landed on one of them. This to show you how close they are. It's about how, about how close those ones that I found with all the sulfur on them were. Yeah, yeah. This is a uh, Hoff. <laughs> so, uh, so can you tell us about this shot, uh, Tia Neal? Well, I was jumping random systems, and I kept finding the same red planets, red and brown planets. I was getting tired of it, and I was getting upset. So I was, I was jumping pretty far out from where the uh, carrier was at, and I came across this really massive blue star, and there was only one body in the whole system, and it was this ice planet. But... It, uh, that was today that I got that picture, and I figured since we're going to do the jump, I didn't, didn't want to land on it because we were doing things today. Yeah. So I at least got there and took screenshots. But it was like, it was really close to this blue star, like deadly close to it. Yeah, and that seems odd. You know, blue star, you yeah. would think if it, there's going to be an ice planet, it has to be really far away from it. So I, hey, that's the thing that I got. place for a secret villain base. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I got it marked in my bookmarks though, because I kind of want to. So it's actually not too far from the circle for my ship to make it the jumps, and everything. I might just go back and actually do more exploring on the planet. All right, let's see, get the seat and see what we're up against here. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. If you uh, if you find something interesting that you want to uh, to check out, you know, definitely bookmark it. You can go uh, go explore at your leisure. I bookmarked it and named it Hoth. Okay, I'm that here. Seems, that seems appropriate. Oh, oh, Otis, did you make it? Yeah. All right. Indeed. Yeah, just in time for Carl to escort you to a chair. Yes. Just instead of back to your ship. I was hanging out over in the place where you buy ships at. So you see what I mean about the stock, right? I mean, we don't have a lot of 
of advanced stock. It's just all basic stuff, but kind of necessary for uh, the, the mining collectors, the uh, uh, mining lasers. And just in case we did run into Thargoids, I bought the uh, the AX experimental uh, uh, base weapon set, you know, like for class one and class two hard points. Because it's cheap and you, it doesn't take up much space in the carrier, you know, that, that, that's definitely a plus. That's not going to help us much. I think if a Thargoid showed up you know, against our exploration ships, we'd have I, problems. An idea I had, and I wish that Lee Dangerous would do it and everything, but, um, you know how we have fighters for our little ships that we can have and everything? Yeah. Have the same thing for the carriers. Um, yeah. Um, the, the way that's, that works, my understanding is that whenever the carrier is in a, an occupied system, you know, in the bubble or in Colonia or something like that, then the local authorities, assuming that the carrier is friendly with them, because we have a faction and we're associated with the Colonia, um, trying to remember the colonial uh, something or other the builders that you know that built the bridge and stuff like that that's the, the, what the squadron is associated with but anyway assuming that our faction isn't hostile with the faction controlling the system that system will send patrol ships to help defend the carrier and also enforce their own local custom laws so that's why when you saw the carrier parked back in the bubble you had vipers flying around everywhere to, just like you would around a normal station. But out here, nothing. Uh, the carrier doesn't, yeah, doesn't have its own police force, apparently. We've got big turrets, you know, who, what do we need a police force for? Also, another, thing, another uh, No, go ahead. Another idea would be, like, uh, if we can have our factions have home bases and then actually have it set for carriers and stuff. I think some player factions have, that are large enough have done something like that, but that it's hooked into the power play, uh, you know, game mechanic, and where oh, they have yeah. to actually um, uh, keep control of territory yeah, and like actively and hold on to it. Space. If you look at power play, a, a good three or four of those factions are actually player based. You know, they set it off as players. So it's, yeah, I think yeah, I, I thought that was always pretty cool. I, I think me and Otis kind of like kind of dipped our toes into that, but we didn't really get too focused. Yeah, that was back when we were playing on the Xbox version. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was. I think the reason to do power play, and of course we can't really do it now that we're out here, um, but the reason to do it is if you want access to some of the faction weapons or equipment, because there are very impressive, um, unique things that you can get by, by joining with a faction and working with them for a month, real time, because you have to be a certain rank in them in order to get access to those things. Prismatic shields, the mining lance, um, and there, there are a couple others that are just over the top impressive. Like the the Packhound uh, rockets are incredible. You know, it's the Macross missile massacre. You know what I'm talking about? Here we go. Oh. All right. Are the uh, power plays only to the bubble? Like you can't expand a ter uh, territory outside the bubble? Or? That's right. It's only in the bubble. Uh, what faction has the uh, stations way out here toward the center of the galaxy? Uh, it's all alliance. I think they're independent. They're independent. Alliance? Oh, okay. But no, independent. And maybe the alliance and other factions. Major players are trying to get a foothold, but it, just, they, it hasn't worked out for them yet. The Colonia Council is maintain their independence so far. Yeah, that might become uh, an issue later. <laughs> we'll see. Be a cool little event to go through. Yeah. I'm kind of glad this isn't like the one for Warhammer, honestly, because that'd be terrifying. <laughs> We're not orcs, so we wouldn't enjoy it too well. Wog. Well, we, hey, we considered naming the carrier Wog. Remember, red makes you go faster. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa! Okay. Yeah, we got a star in the face here. Wow. Got a nice view of the star. It's like, it's illuminating the, the inside pretty nicely, actually. Yes, yeah, it is. You're right. You can see it just streaming through the windows. You like it? Nice. Nice. nice, nice. To the ship. I'm blinded. I can't even see the step up onto the day. I see the, the look out on it. Nice. To the ship. I'm gonna go outside the no-fire zone, dump those narcotics and stuff, and blast them. Alright, fair enough.
I'll get shot by the carrier. It'd be sad. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm moving outside the no fire zone. Well, at least you'll respond. No, hold on. Notorious. I do have notorious players can't talk. I don't know what that would do to you. Anyway, yeah, you just <laughs> go far, far away. Make sure Carl doesn't notice. Maybe to another system. <laughs> yeah. Just to be on the safe side. Oh, did I get the, the first discovery? I wonder. <laughs> Better race. This system kind of looks terrifying, actually. Don't they all? When you're staring down the star? Yeah, when you're staring down the star. I mean, there's only two stars in this system. It's another depressing system, but just, just staring at the star, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Onions. Hey, we're still not the furthest I've been away from this circle, too. Jesus. Yeah. How far have you uh, gone out? For me, it is in, in, like pretty much in the next quadrant, the one, the next one in front, uh, more going in the in front of us. Right. The the one north uh, northwest of us, that quadrant right there. Yeah. I don't know if that's what these squares are called and everything. No, that that's fine. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's uh, that next one towards the middle of it. Is the furthest I've gone? Actually, I think. Let me see if I can pull that up here. The codex is probably the way to do that. Yeah. So we are in the inner Orion Spur. That's the name of it. Yeah, perfect. That's what I was looking for. The next one up is Temple. We'll be passing through that. No, the one above uh, Temple. Okay, that is the uh, the inner uh, Centaurus arm. Did you get him in Centaurus? Yeah, that one up there. Yeah, that's the way I was at. The kind of towards the middle of it. Okay, so we're, we're not going to go there, but we're going to go through Temple, uh, Orion Cygnus, and then end up, uh, end up in Perseus. And right. we, we were planning on doing from there is going to Colonia, which is uh, kind of inner Perseus, I think, complex. Yeah, it's one of those two, but a uh, but Perseus arm, yeah, it's way out there. And there's even, you know, outer, this, they call it outer arm. Um, a place further that we could go but that's up to you uh, you know folks if we actually really wanted to do that i think percy aren't probably good enough for this trip and maybe we'll do that at a future date so um all right so let's see how are you doing otis have has the carrier shot you down yet i super cruised away a little bit and then dropped out of super cruise smart man a there you go abandoned cargo Abandon that, and I'll hold on to the minerals that I salvaged because that palladium's looking really nice with that fifty thousand credit galactic average on it. Yeah, what what I'll do is I'll set up the carrier dub so you, that you can you know, sell that to the carrier, and it's not going to be fifty thousand, but it's going to be something, right? And get them to turn around and sell it to help with the uh, with the upkeep. Well, I like that. With you had your lights on when you were landing, so we, we got to see you kind of descent to the bad. That's pretty cool. I just like how the autopilot makes you land, though. Yeah. Crash you into the carrier and turn you at the last possible minute. And it's like, da 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 uh, I think we're a little close. I think we're a little close, Steve. Oh, okay. Immediately, like, emergency brakes and stuff. Mm hmm So it was Otis and uh, Tia Neal. You were the only two that uh, took off this time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just wait for Otis to get back and I'll land the next uh, the next course, which I can go ahead and be thinking about. Okay, we are in. Oh, okay. Actually, the next stop is in uh, one of the named spots, uh, NGC sixty-seven fifty-five. So that's close to a nebula. <laughs> so there might actually be something to see. You know, if, if we'll, we'll see how where we drop out. Best the case, I'm gonna stay inside my ship. So when we get there, I can immediately just jump out. I I, I imagine if it's close to a named body, it's probably well explored. So, but, yeah. but it's still gonna be something. You know, if there is a nebula near that spot, yeah, 
you might actually be able to see some. And it might not be a nebula, I don't recall if it's a like a stellar globular cluster, maybe just a bunch of stars. It would be something like that. And that would still be interesting to see, you know, in the backdrop. So we will see, as I say, when we get there. I just want to make sure that we have everybody aboard before we plot that course. And then we'll talk about some more of these screenshots. I think we're getting uh, getting through the screenshots that I had from commanders for this week. <laughs> so, oh wow, yeah, man, it makes it bright in here. Yeah, that star right there. So we're going to go up and visit with Carl briefly. Carl and Tetris guy. No fire zone entered. Ah, hmm, my gosh. So this is Carl. He never stops playing on his iPad. Score. And Tetris guy. Now I understand that uh, this fellow over here, they they is alleged to be playing different games and different fleet carriers. I saw the stream that um, the Elite Dangerous community folks had this morning. And they had their guy playing Galaga. So it's it's always some video game. Never actually doing it work. They are actually playing Asteroids. Oh, hello. Hi there. Hold on, what are you in now? Is that a... The hauler. Oh, okay, okay. It's How many ships did you bring? Well, you can purchase a bunch of ships here, so yeah, why not? The oh, hauler yeah. was a nice, cheap little thing that I could run those things out of. Yep. That, that I'm actually not, surprised oh. how big the hauler turns out to be. It now that I've actually got them. some space freed up, though, I'm probably going to trade this hauler in for an adder, because I'd rather have an adder. I better not go too much further, or I will be infringing on landing pads. Carl, get, get him some slack. He's just showing up. Request docking. Um, am I stuck now? I am now landing. This is a tragedy. I apparently am I'm stuck in the console behind uh, Carl. He's, he's trapped me here. That's okay. I'm going to get teleported to a chair whenever we do the jump sequence. So I'm not, I'm not that concerned. I'll just be up here for a moment. All right. So you're landing. So I'll go ahead and plug this next course in. Alright, so we're going to go to Fleet Carrier. Navigation. Pull down is complete. Open the galaxy map. And hopefully that's the one. Let me look around and see if there is any actually anything. To that. Not sure what body that's supposed to represent. Because I don't see a, a nebula near there. So maybe just. A, okay. Actually, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I am curious now. Okay, course laid in. So, let's see, through the power of Google, we're going to look up that NGC designation and see what it refers to. Near Galactic Center? Let's see, NGC 6755 is an open cluster of stars. It's a, yes, it's a globular cluster. In the equatorial constellation of Aquila, positioned about uh, three degrees to the east 
of the star Delta Aquilae. It was discovered by the Anglo-German astronomer William Herschel on July 30th, 1785, located at a distance of 8,060 light years from the sun. It lies uh, 30 degrees to the northwest of NGC 6755, with the pair forming a visual double cluster. So there you go. It's a it's a globular cluster, and that's uh, it may it may be something that we notice just a higher density of stars in the area. Uh, but it's not going to be as spectacular as a nebula, you know, that that you can actually fly up to and see. So we'll see. <laughs> I got William I Herschel. got first discovery on this system that we're in now. There you go, grass. I did good. Okay, so let's see. We've got a few more screenshots here. And I like this one. Uh, let's see here. This is um, Otis and his uh, Diamondback Explorer. And he's got a pretty clear shot of a trinary system. You know, close, three stars very close together um, with the Diamondback Explorer in silhouette. So that was that's a good shot. I like that one. Where did you... Uh, Where'd you grab that one, actually? I can't remember, honestly. I forgot to bookmark it. It was before we started our uh, journey, though, I'm pretty sure. It was when I was on my way back from uh, visiting the Soul Nebula. Okay, I got you. I got you. So, yeah, it wasn't out here. It was uh, way out yonder. Still, I like it. Way it's yonder kind of... in the opposite direction. Right. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is more of a joke than anything. I wish I could zoom in. Maybe I can. Uh, <laughs> we were... Uh, th we have our own uh, rescue ships that we fitted just in case. You know, just, maybe something we can take care of ourselves. We don't need to call the fuel rats. And one of them's an orca, so we have the rescue orca. And it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty... I'm, 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 rescue I'm, orca! I'm a little disappointed that you didn't call in the rescue order instead of just self-destructing. It would have been nice to actually see that thing actually go out there and, and do do what it can. The rescue order. Would have been nice, but I underestimated the 2G gravity. Again? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what got you in trouble the first time, so I guess. Yeah. yeah. What else we got here? Oh, yeah, this was, this was great. Um, this is when, again, it's Otis and in, in his diamond bag discovered that you... It, it, within the Odyssey client, you can drive right up to the command deck and see who's inside. I think that's that's spectacular. Um, so they did that. Yeah, he, he drove right up and took a picture of me staring slight shot out out the window at him, going, "What are you doing?" <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it it works out really well. And apparently, you can target individuals inside as well. So it's scary. So And this is uh, Tianil and uh, Otis in a Fertilance. This is before we took the trip. But you guys were out uh, running missions, as I recall. Uh, yeah, we were doing the up. And th this, this too, this is another great shot. I love the, the shots in profile like this. So I, I quite enjoyed this one. I'm trying to remember uh, where this one came from. Oh, okay, this is a, this is the diamond bag, so it's got to be you, Otis. So could you could you explain this one to us? Uh, I was just out exploring and found a star with an unusual color because I ain't never seen one that's vibrant pink before, so I figured it was pretty photogenic. It is, yeah. Oh yeah, this is always a spectacular sight. Um, I'm not sure if you caught this one out here or whether it was your previous trip, Otis. But this that is was my star. previous trip. And, and I feel safe saying it's a neutron star because the, the blue, a white dwarf has a similar uh, streamer effect, but is much bigger, 
the neutron star just looks like a big bright light, you know, blinding you, and it's very tiny actually. Um, for those that uh, that don't know the in-game use of uh, neutron stars and neutron stars and white dwarfs, they create these uh, streamers, you know, particles coming off of the uh, magnetic poles north and south. The the streamers are dangerous. Uh, you don't want to take your ship to, and be in them for too long. And no. also the uh, the star itself is dangerous because they're they're so small. They're it's difficult to gauge, particularly on white dwarfs, exactly what the safe distance away from them is. And you, it's way too easy to kind of stumble into that point where you're pulled out of uh, frame shift and begin overheating. So you got to be careful about getting too close to either one. White dwarfs, I think, are the more dangerous when it comes to that. But the again, getting back to the in-game uh, purpose, is if you do it just right, and it takes practice to get it right, but if you pull your ship into the stream, your frame shift drive will go through an overload sequence until it's, they say, frame shift supercharged. And at that point, get out of the stream as quick as you can, and that will dramatically increase your jump range. Uh, with the case of neutron stars, it's much greater, the benefit is, than a white dwarf. I think a white dwarf is like a 50% increase, and the neutron star is doubly. So, you know, if you're in an exploration ship and you're in a hurry to get places, these are gold. And you'll notice that your navigation actually gives you an option to use or not use FSD boosts and neutron stars and such like that. It'll, it'll build it into the, uh, to the route. There are um, mapped lanes that, and this was before the Navi, Navi computer would do it for you. They call it the uh, the Neutro Star Super Highway, basically a route to get from the Sol to Colonia to Sag A Star to Beagle, using neutron stars in a minimum number of jumps. So these are very important to the to the history and and current gameplay in Elite Dangerous. But for our purposes, we probably won't be using them because we got the carrier, you know, to get us where we need to go. But in the future, if you go out there on your own and you're trying to get to a specific spot to explore or just want to be in, you're in a hurry, these are, these are your ticket. So yeah, and that one right there was a particularly strong one, too. It boosted my jump range from, I think, my base jump range unladen was around 48 at the time, 48 light years. And that particular one boosted it to over 200. Oh, God. Yeah. So it... Yeah, sometimes it's really dramatic, the effect that you get off of those. So. Uh, me and Otis, more pictures on the uh, Discord. Yeah, a few a few more that I forgot to add earlier. Yeah, I, okay. found, a sun, I found a sun one that was pretty interesting. Oh, cool. Well, uh, I'm, yeah, we, we may get to them here in a bit. I mean, if, we're not going to lose any pictures. I mean, hell, we've got weeks and weeks to go, so you know, I've, I've oh, yeah. plenty of... And we'll Absolutely. Have, we'll hopefully have a lot more pictures on the journey. Yeah, I hope so too, because that's one of the things I really love about this is seeing where you go and you know what you find, and and hearing your stories about it. I guess this is another shot of your uh, of your long jump uh, neutron star there. I'll just see from yep. inside the cockpit. So all right. figured it was nice and dramatic. It is. I mean, it, one one thing about let me go back to that neutron star, and that's another good shot too. I like like your double with the the DBX. Um, you can't see it in a still picture, but the the neutron stars and, and white dwarfs are rotating, and they tend to rotate fast. In fact, this is the origin of pulsars, and you've heard of pulsars perhaps where you get regular pulses. They're 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 all, they're very predictable. A few uh, sometimes the the frequency is a few seconds, sometimes it's a milliseconds, and if you can imagine something the size of a, a small moon or a city block that's rotating around and around so quickly that the beam that comes out of, of one pole passes over Earth every few milliseconds, you know, that's you know, hundred thousands of RPM. Uh, it's spectacular just to conceive it, but it's spectacular to see because you see those things going you know, as they're rotating you, you don't actually see the ones that rotate longitudinally. You see the ones that kind of rotate uh, more along their axis. 
but some of them are just spin up and they look like solid walls of light. A few of them are more laid back, they kind of spiral around and you can see them and you know, that's a cool effect. But the ones that are just f frantic are, are just scary. <laughs> You, you approach that thing and you're wondering, is this going to rip the ship apart? Or you know, because it's making a terrible sound as you get close to it. So, yeah, those those are interesting. Yeah, that's another good one. I like that. The DVX turns out to be pretty photogenic. It's a good ship. It is a good ship. I I, I have a DVX that I did for uh, Guardian site runs. Um, one, because it's got really long legs, and two, because the Guardian sites, when you went there to get schematics, you could only park medium, small and medium ships close to the Guardian site. You know, I actually went out there with the Connie once, and not knowing that, and I couldn't find a place to park because you know it's surrounded by mountains, as one one was. And, you know, I couldn't do anything. But you can take a, a DBX and park it right in the site. And the trick to that is, with the DBX, if you mount point defense guns, even with it parked and shut down, as you encounter enemies that fire missiles at your SRV, the DBX will shoot the missiles down with its point defense guns. And that's, that's just awesome. You know, you're, you're over there halfway across this Guardian site, and a Guardian uh, drone shows up about to make your ruin your world, fires rockets at you, and then the DBX says, no. So, thank you. Yeah, okay, yeah, put me in my seat. Carl said, sit, go back there and sit down. <laughs> I'm being lowered down against my will. <laughs> so let me, uh, I think my we'll, we'll give enough to survive on the surface. I'm glad Carl did that because I really was. I would, I managed to get down there. I went down the steps and got behind the console trying to see Carl. What are you doing? You know, what, what game are you playing? What's the high score? And I couldn't get out of there. So it's okay. Did this work too? <laughs> well, good night, gents. It's been fun, uh, but I gotta get up early, so. Well, Tom, thanks for uh, coming along, and uh, we'll catch you next time. You have a good evening. Y'all yeah, too. Night. Later. We've still got uh, one more jump out to this one, and then we'll, we will be at our destination. So we're about uh, 20 minutes away, depending on you know, how much, uh, how many antics people go through whenever we get to this next site. Oh. I can imagine Otis you know, might want to buy a new ship and smash it. It's got to scrape across the uh, the landing areas, you know, just in a cleaning pass. That's, that's how we do the Keep the deck clean. Gets we off the tougher space particles. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Space Cleaning Service 3000. Up. I think that's it for me too. I think I'm gonna bail. Well, thank Appreciate you, Mike. You. you take care, and uh, we will. We'll see you on the flip side. All right. We will. We will be where we need to be when you wake up. That's cool. We'll catch you later, guys. All right. Good night. Everyone's dropping one by one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Only the stronger will survive. It's all, it's real life Trump's game. You know, we, uh, we all have uh, real life schedules that we have to work around this. That's kind of what I, I like, the fact that we can haul everybody along in the carrier without them being here. They don't have to stay away from it. Just, you know, yeah. That is a good thing, though. I do like that. It is. Bye-bye, Star. Oh no, I lost connection. What? An unrecoverable error on transaction server. Error code Black Hatter. Oh. <laughs> the jump was so Wait. hectic, it lost me. <laughs> and it, you, yeah, you're gonna wake up in that system back there. That's what's gonna happen, yeah. Oh no, I hope not. That'd be, that'd be terrible. <laughs>
I gotta wait 50 seconds before I can even rejoin the session. Well, we're still moving. I mean, I'm sure that that has something to do with it. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, it won't let me do open play, private group, or a solo play. I've gotta wait like 50 seconds. Yeah. It's gotta reconnect with the servers. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, I. That uh, I do think there's a greater density of stars, but it's kind of hard to tell. From here. Okay, we've arrived, so it should be safe to come on back in. I'm gonna head downstairs a closer look. You know, seven billion credits. I ought to be able to change the music in the elevator. I hope so, but apparently not. No, no, no. What would you change it to? Uh, oh, no. No! No, no, no! What happened? No! Oh, where am I at? Because I'm not on the ship anymore. What are you in? Uh, the Drozier OLOB 12.3 system? You're That's 479 light years away. 496.79. No! Oh. oh my god, that's terrible. Um, that's the system we were just in, actually. <laughs> okay, oh, well, we're not going to leave you out there. I mean, we're... yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. It was, like, secured inside the, the ship and everything. It's, aw. That's terrible, yeah. Start jumping this way to shave some light years off of it so that we ain't got to go back as far. All right, what system? Uh, is it? It's not going to matter. Don't worry about it. Just, just hang tight where you're at. And besides, okay. you get to see us come out. I don't think you've seen that yet. Yeah, so um, let me confirm where you're at. D-R-O-J-O, IBM? No, no, no. This is back. D-R-O-J-E-A-O-L-O-B-12-3. OL dash O B twelve dash three. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. That's the one we were just at. All right, we'll think, come back for you. I think next yeah. time I'll just get out, walk, and sit in the seats like everybody else. You didn't fasten your seatbelts, man. That's what it was. <laughs> just just imagine the story of how you'd have to explain how it happened because I was secured inside the hangar. So like. It's Carl. When you go to At the last possible minute, Carl said, and if, I don't know if he goes spinning off into space. Makes you feel like a, right before like a Star Destroyer jumps and it, it dumps all its uh, trash and everything, I felt like that was me. Yeah, look out for Slave 1, man. I know, right? Like, I might see Boba yeah. Fett. That'd be... <laughs> you could either see Boba Fett or a Million Falcon. That'd be kind of cool. That would. So that's going to add a couple of jumps to our uh, itinerary tonight, but no, no problem. We're going to go back and pick up our wayward anaconda. Uh, Wait, what so system is it? Anything? Anyway? I want to see if I can even if I, if I can make those jumps. Uh, we are in. Um, uh, actually, let me. Uh, probably the easiest thing for you is um, I'll copy to the Discord. Oh, that would help. Yeah. That way you can see. Okay, there you go. That system. Um, Apparently. And we're, we're going to... I mean, if you feel you can make that in less than uh, 30 minutes, because that's... No, 40 minutes, because that would be our round trip time. You know, jump 40 minutes? to you. 20 minutes uh, per jump. It's 92 so, uh, jumps. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't yeah. sound right. Yeah, that doesn't actually. What's your jump range? We're only 500 away. Man, it still says 92 jumps. I don't know how to look at that. I've got... What is check, your, check your route planning. You might be set on economical routes. Well, it's not, though. That's the weird thing. Uh, do you have any, like, exclusions? See, I got...
I have it on economical routes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. What's it look like? Uh... I mean, if I started jumping now, I could probably make it. The economical still... makes sure I hit stars, right? Yeah, economical is not what you want for this. It's uh, fastest. Fastest? Okay. Yeah, and that'll get it way down. Okay, that makes it 30 jumps. Yeah, that I think you would make that before uh, 40 minutes. Because, like I say, for the carrier to do come back for you, it would be a 40-minute round trip. Oh, let's yeah, because yeah, cause each, each jump, and I, I've timed this, if you don't refuel... Each jump takes roughly about a minute and a half to navigate around the star to line back up with your next destination and jump again. Now let me start making jumps and everything, and then just say either I don't make it in time or I run out of fuel. You can just jump to where I make it to. No, no. <laughs> rescue orca. Run out of fuel. Yeah, okay. That, that, we'll have the rescue orca on stream tonight. So to, nah, you, if you need to... Make a fuel stop. Go ahead. I mean, at this point, you know it, it's just us, and, uh, and yeah, we'll 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 make it happen. So go ahead and make your jumps, and we'll we'll talk about uh, the screenshots and other stuff while while you're making your way here. All right. That that's an interesting issue. I've uh, I'm sure this happened to others, but uh, you know to get disconnected right at the beginning of the jump, man. At least now we know what happens. Yeah, it can't happen. While we wait, I'm going to be out here hitting the system with the FSS. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's good. Is it actually more than just two stars this time? I'm not sure. Um, we'll have to let Otis report. And oh, wow. Says. But we'll be here for, for a moment or two. We got an icy body with a double ring. Seriously. First discovered by Broken One, so somebody's already been here and mapped all this. Yeah, yeah. But, like I said, that this one... is NGC, so it, it, it's been well picked over, I'm sure. This is one of the but named stellar. That areas. one's interesting. I'm going to go look at that one. What is that? Let's see. C12 5. Okay. Drop out of. FSS, find that in Le System Map. Can't see I'm doing a lot of discovery as I'm going, though. Yeah, yeah, honk as you go. Always be honking. Okay, so let's see here. We're going back to the screenshots, and I guess I'll actually throw in some other. Uh, shots from previous expeditions and while we're since we'll have a little bit of extra time I think this is one that you you picked up Otis this is uh, probably from your trip to the Soul Nebula yeah the one on the left is the Soul Nebula and the littler one on the right is the Heart Nebula yeah that, and, and that's awesome I, I love that you can get that close to Nebula and go around them actually see them from different angles that's always great. And this is the, the DBX peering off at the Milky Way. From way yeah. out there. Yeah, and that's another uh, point to be made is that the, the Milky Way looks different depending on where in the Milky Way you are, or above or below, or you know, where have you. If you're in the middle there, you're surrounded by stars. It's this constant, it's just, this this blinding light in almost all directions not blinding but but white in all directions and then if you go high enough you know it looks like a sea of stars beneath you so it, it, it's interesting being able to, to see the the old home galaxy from all those different angles yeah there's your uh, there's a good shot of your dbx red makes it go faster <laughs> yep Okay, I think this was your shot of the ring that was around a, uh, a star. And that little line is actually the, the, thin, the ring itself, very thin. 
that's kind of off in the distance. That's that's an unusual feature, but uh, yeah, that, that's that's quite unusual to see that. You'd have to get pretty far away in order to actually see it as a ring, so that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this is your action pose. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm telling you, it, it's meme ready. You know, you, we just need to paste some text in there, and then you, then you'd be good to go. And that, that's also that planet that had the other planet orbiting really close to it. You can actually see it right there, just above the mountain there. You know what that yeah, planet? Sure What's that? That planet reminds me of a uh, like a scene from Starship Troopers. Actually, yeah, I can see that. Just waiting <laughs> for the bugs to kind of crawl up from the ground or around through that ravine over there. Yeah. Would exactly. you like to know more? <laughs> Would you like Click. to know more? Yeah. Okay, and I think that's all the screenshots I had from uh, from this week's expedition. Let me. I have another batch. Let me dig into it. All right. Give me a moment to pull that up. We're gonna have to uh, to add your tale of getting lost in witch space. You know, the, I guess we, what we could say is that an interdiction took place on the carrier, but the only person that got pulled out was you. I was the little man out. That's right. You didn't get to see a Thargoid or anything. Just, just oh, hey, what am I doing here? Just got kidnapped. Yeah, that's a heck of a thing. Super right? assist deactivated. Spin back around and get this planet in profile with the sun so I can see those rings. Wow, those rings are really faint. Here, here we go. So these are like uh, like home movie pictures from years ago. This was uh, let me find it here. Yeah. Yeah. So Distant Worlds 2 was um, an expedition back in 2019, I want to think, 2020, uh, some years ago. But it was um, one of the the first of a group of expeditions, and now it's it's pretty common to see expeditions that do this trip. They went for the bubble to some scenic points, meandering to Sagittarius A. Uh, then they went up, and you know, kind of picked a the difficult difficult top of the galaxy type spot, so you could see that sea of of stars uh, effect and then from there went on the other side of the Milky Way all the way out to Beagle Point uh, which it probably needs no introduction but it is used to be anyway the farthest point away from uh, Seoul you could get uh, in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy not the case anymore because you've got engineered ships that can jump further you've got carriers that can go even further than that uh, but back in the day you know Beagle Point was was the place to be and this was the ship I took. It was an Anaconda. Uh, obviously, this is after the expedition because you got the had to do finish the expedition to get the little uh, decal. But but yeah, this was the uh, the Arden Explorer. Uh, all right, so we'll go through some of these shots and see what we had to see. Yeah, that, that's Marcus uh, sitting in that seat for hours and hours and hours on end. It's lonely in the bridge of a of a Connie when you're the only one there. Yeah, it's such a big ship for only one person. Yeah, and and that's that's something that's always kind of bothered me. And Eve Online is another place that has the same problem. You've got huge ships, and you know, you're the only, you're the pilot, and where's everybody else, right? Yeah, I kind of so, wish they. I wish you could like instead of just getting the one crew member to fly like a fighter, you can get like a whole crew for your ship if you've got enough seats or something. Yeah, I feel like. Fill the void a bit or something. I don't know. No, I agree with that. Uh, this was um, I'm I'm getting my uh, my expedition crossed because you know there were several, and I can't remember where all these screenshots came from. But this is a this was a moon that had a pretty good albedo. You can see the star, which is actually very tiny, uh, but still reflecting brightly off of the uh, the moon's icy surface there in front of you. Yeah, this is this is kind of Hoth 2. 
<laughs> you know, a, 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 relate, a, a relative of your uh, of your icy world discovery, and the the ship there is a um, the big Gudamaya, because I'm I'm with you, Otis. I can never remember whether they're calling it the the cutter or the clipper, uh, but but the big one um, that's rigged for exploration. That was the ardent dream. Love ice rings. Ice rings in this game are just just gorgeous. They're they're really wonderful. It's particularly if you get down in there and you get the right lighting and they kind of look. You have like uh, god rays going on, you know, where the where the sun or the star is blocked by big rocks and you're seeing the shadows, you know, kind of peering through the fog. But uh, but any angle you catch a, an ice ring is a good one. And that would be a little uh, gas giant. It's not a water world. I remember this one. So that's a gas giant over a landable uh, moon with an atmosphere. You know, kind of a thin atmosphere. Oh, that's you, pretty. Yeah, you get that, that that gradient effect, and you can see the the gas giant up above it. That's a wallpaper, is what that is. Elite's great for you know coming up with some of this imagery. You know, you just, that's why, I, again, it's one of the benefits of exploring. You go out there and see, just quite by accident, you come across stuff that's just amazing. Okay, coming back in, where is the carrier? There it is. We're hiding, we're cloaked. Car Carl, turn on the cloaking device. Um, same sort of deal, you got a, uh, a gas giant with rings, but you see the rings edge on, so they just kind of look like a line dividing it. Black Bisector. You know, if, you, if you've ever played Star Wars Galaxies, you'll, you'll get that reference. Not Galaxies. Uh, right. the, the Old Republic. The Old Republic. Yeah. 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 Uh, Black Bisector. So, and then you have another, it's kind of strange because you see the star is actually center field, but again, it's very distant, it's very dim, very small, but it still leaves this bright um, specular reflection. So, not not sure the lighting is accurate there, but it still makes for a great picture. And there's the Arden Dream uh, with that same shot to kind of place it. Place it. Well, now you're here, she is, man. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna end up where we need to be. We just had the mishap with uh, with Tia Neal getting left behind there, so. <laughs> it was I was up like yesterday's trash. I know. How many I jumps mean, you got left anyway? <laughs> I have twenty two jumps left. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. You know, you'll get here well before you know, if we sent the carrier back for you and brought and brought it back, like I say, it's you know, twenty minutes each jump, forty minutes total. So you'll you'll make good time. Um but but E, yeah, if you if you need to drop out and you know, get some rest with uh, for tomorrow. So by all means, we we got one more jump, and then we'll be where we need to be. And uh, by by the time you wake up and you're ready to poke your nose out and do some exploring, we'll be there. Actually, it's it's more than twenty minutes per jump because it's it's fifteen minutes to jump and it's twenty minute cooldown, isn't it? It's a five minute cooldown. Oh, um, minute. But but you're right in that we typically don't. You know, we do other stuff. <laughs> We've been, you know, parking. Po folks will pop out and take a look around and come back. And in order not to leave anybody behind, even though I somehow failed this time, um, I haven't actually begun the jump sequence until everybody's back aboard. So, but twenty minutes ideally between jumps. Yeah. I did so, see something interesting. Um, I caught the their uh, stream today to get the last unlock I needed. Mm -hmm. uh, skin for the Type 7. Uh, or Type 9, I forget. They're doing type nines this month, uh, the spring skins. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, 
one of, at one of the points whenever I, I looked up and saw it because I had it running I had it running muted but in order for it to count time you have to have the window like in front so I had it on one of my auxiliary screens it shrunk down but I uh -huh. looked up and they were docking on a uh, they, they had docked on a a ship of theirs, a, 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 not so much a carrier as a as one of these <laughs> mega ships, I guess it is, because it did the 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 carrier is jumping in, and it was like four days, fourteen hours. So a scheduled jump. Yes. Huh. I don't know. I haven't seen something to do that in game, and that may just be something I've an oversight on my part. Uh, but that would be a great thing to warn people. Hey, yeah, you know, we're we're not gonna be here forever. Been doing been doing that um, via the channels that we have. You know, the Discord. Oh, hello. I have made it back. You made it back. I see that. The lighting coming from the carrier's engines is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just the standard lighting, too. You know, I didn't spruce it up at all. That's just whatever carrier comes with. But, uh, well, I think this was... I, I think this was a... I, I don't think this was a carrier. I think this was a... Uh, like you say, a mega ship, yeah. A the difference being mega ships are really NPC controlled, and then yeah. carriers are player controlled. Yeah. And yeah, Otis has returned. Yeah, the, 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 the stream was supposed to feature mining, and the, the I think they got about five minutes of mining in. Yeah. I did, I did catch most of it, yeah, I noticed that they, they kind of you know, got waylaid, as, as it were, distracted. I think the one fellow was trying to um, the DSS uh, gas giant, so, yeah. I threw another photo of my journey back to you guys. Oh, excellent. Yeah, any anything you throw at me, I'm going to try to feature in uh, in subsequent uh, streams. You can just call it my lost journey, <laughs> <laughs> which is a great story. You know, hey, you know, I saw the carrier disappear into the distance, and I started just you know, like, wow! I saw all these red flashing lights, and all of a sudden, my ship was pushed out of the hangar. <laughs> That's right. I swear it's Carl. You know, I I, I fully believe it. You know, he's he's up there, and every once in a while, they'll just. Throw a ship out just to, just to be mean. Yeah, seriously, he's abusive. I've got 17 jumps left, so I mean, it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, you're making good time. I'm not concerned about it. Oh, yeah, I am going to head to bed because it's about pumpkin time for me. Yep, fair enough. Well, like I say, we will. When you wake up, we will be where we need to be. We're probably going to be arriving there about 10:30 or so. You know, another 30 minutes, as I, I would guess. So, in the morning, all will be well. Okay. Take care, man. Hopefully, I'll actually be there. Yeah. Hopefully, we don't leave you behind at the. <laughs> Again, yeah. Yeah, I don't want that to happen again. Yeah, the the, the dream here really that I streamed it for a while back last year, you know, during some of these exploration trips in in that big shit, Gudamaya. And it kind of takes people by surprise because it's not normally a exploration ship. The big, the big, one. but I think whenever it comes to taking screenshots, it really kind of helps. You know that kind of not glowy color, but it's still audacious. The uh, 
kind of the gold plating color that, that it was in. If you're going to explore, explore in luxury and style. Of course. I want to have something that's actually got size for bedrooms and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Imagine going out in a sidewalk and trying to explore and you'd have to sleep in your chair. Well, some some of our new explorers, you know, that just ma barely made it to the carrier before we left, that's what they got. You know, they got a oh, yeah, side wander. Yeah, but there's like probably rooms assigned on the carrier where they could just sleep on it and stuff. Yeah, they're not to sleep in it. That's right, and certainly not forever. Well, the sidewinder is actually big enough to have your quarters on it, just a, just really small. So. Oh yeah, you never get like a a good scale size of what the interior would be like because you don't know if like a lot of that's just mechanical like where the engines are and all the pipes and stuff like that or if there's actually mm -hmm. room or something that's right yeah i mean like with the anaconda or your ship it's like oh yeah there's definitely got to be like extra bedrooms and stuff you would yeah you would think so it's crazy space in that you you remember when we you brought the the python rasonante yeah, to meet this ship you know when we were out exploring yeah we actually got to look in the windows and stuff like that yeah right yeah and how much effort it took to actually, you know, jump on top of the thing. Yeah, seriously. That was and a fun think, time. And I think we wouldn't have been able to do that before they added the uh, update where we can actually go uh, out of the ship and everything. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was surprised that you, you could just walk on up and grab your own SRV and off you go. I'm thinking, you know, well, at some point when we uh, we get out there, we find an interesting spot. We might do that, you know, with some of our commanders is uh, have a day that is is just fun and games on the ground. Oh, that'd be fun. Land your ships, do do things with the SRVs, races and such. That would be fun. So we'll we'll plan that out, uh, you know, when we get a little bit further out. Right now, I think everybody's kind of settling into, uh, you know, to the routine they want you know, to explore once or twice a week or more or less whatever we could all... probably do that we could probably do that on one of the stops when we need to actually refill and resupply and everything we can just like take time out of this like still do the same kind of stream but instead of jumping we'd be just playing around really. yeah that's a that's a good idea actually you know use the same the same time slot for that so i think i think that's practical oh where was this um i know this was on the distant world strip this screenshot we're looking at, but you had a uh, a big planetary nebula, a globular cluster off in the distance. Yeah, you know, just a just really busy. Uh, it's a whole bunch of features right there together. Yeah, and seriously, I kind of like it. it. Even looks like there's a shooting star going on or something. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah, it's interesting. I just can't recall exactly where where I took that. And I wish I took better notes for some of these. You know from years ago. Uh, ah. Let's see, let's zoom out here. I like, right. that. I like that shot a lot. This is taking that theme of, you know, uh, bodies that are co-orbiting, but also very close to their star. Oh, the and planet. I wanted to mention that with the uh, I forgot to mention it with the other guys. So one trick to finding things like this is when you're doing a, a full spectrum scan, if you look at the orbital period of the body that you scan, if it's close to a gas giant or a star or something, you're looking for small orbital periods because the smaller it is, the, the closer it is to whatever the parent is. And if you get something that's an orbital period, say around a like that you know it's like class m or k um if you get an orbital period that's a day or less then it's just shooting around that star it's real close if you same deal with something around a, a big gas giant you know if it's uh, like half a day you know it, it goes around the thing in six hours you can actually be on the thing and see the planet moving a little bit you know through the through the sky so those those are great ones to uh, a great way to try to find good shots is look at orbital period and look for small ones um, and then another thing is uh, you also get day and night cycles as you as you know 
if a day if a planet is not tidally locked and rotates around its axis, you'll have uh, you'll have that rotational period there uh, noted as well. So it's uh, it's also something noteworthy if you want to see sunrises and sunsets while you're there. You know, find ones that rotate quickly, and then you can sit there and you won't have to wait for hours for that to happen. You can actually see it, you know, within a, maybe 30 minutes or so. This was one of the uh, get-togethers. There, were Distant Worlds uh, too, and, and a lot of the newer uh, expeditions you know that are organized that have hundreds of players participating, will have uh, stops where people can meet each other in, in open, um, and they they can get pretty interesting. I think this one was around a, a conflict site, basically an abandoned uh, settlement. So yeah, you see there, people are getting out. That this time. It was before Odyssey, so you just had ships and SRVs, but people could still manage to get in trouble with that. Yeah, here's another no way. shot of one of those get-togethers. Yeah, that's the old uh, Connie way back when. Commander T. Neil, you are two jumps away from me. I'm 11 jumps away from where the carrier is at. Well, my jump has taken me from our system up to a system that's got a neutron star sitting in it, so I can just bump off that and jump straight to where you are. Oh, I like that. That looks cool. And the kind of, you know how bright the background is? You know how kind of foggy the, the sky is rather than just a pitch black? Yeah. That's the sort of sky that you start getting as you get closer to the galactic core because there's just so much ambient light. You're surrounded by the Milky Way rather than viewing it off in the distance. So you start getting that effect. And the stars become much more dense because you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, the stellar density uh, is just through the roof. And you get places that you just can't you know, walk a light year and not trip over a, a big blue. So, And the, the thing about this one is uh, that's a water world orbiting a gas giant and both have rings and cool. the one water world orbiting a gas giant kind of blew me away because that's pretty rare but then they both had rings and you can see them like that that was even better okay i'm 10 jumps away now ah this is the sea of uh stars effect that i was talking about if you're very far above uh, the center of the Milky Way galaxy, that's what the Milky Way looks like. It just looks like the sea of stars below you. Cool. That looks good. Yeah, that is something I use for a backdrop there. <laughs> but this was, again, you know, looking for a moon that has a very small orbital uh, period around uh, its parent star. I think this one had like a 0.2 day orbital period, so it was quick, you know, orbiting this thing. And you, all I did was wait for this conjunction to happen, and it did. You know, I just waited for the, the sun to pop up. And didn't have to wait long, so it's good stuff. And yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, uh, hot dogging it as it were but what gets me about a situation like this is the lighting effect the big white on the right lights that you know, the starboard side of the ship white and the big orange on the left just at the port side of the ship is orange and you, yeah it just slides right down the middle so I, I always like the, the accurate lighting there uh, and it's only gotten the, better with they were updates and everything. Yeah, yeah. Because again, yeah, this is pre Odyssey. You know, the lighting is the lighting is certainly improved in, in many respects. And as I said, it's kind of regressed in others, but but overall yeah. I, I enjoy it. This is a hell world. Um, not only does the ring look like it's glowing in the dark, but the world is a uh, like a metal rich that has open um, active volcanism and open large lava uh, streams just just all over the place it's, it's just uh, 
It's a mess. <laughs> it wouldn't stole. That seems that like that would be a Mustafar. It's ridiculous. It's a Mustafar. Yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, here is one of our uh, uh, meetups. So, you know, people would do crazy stuff. You know, they they park the ships as close as they could without you know uh, nudging. But but what's impressive to me is that back in the day, you would have folks a lot of anacondas because of the jump range. But then you come across folks like that guy in the middle, a Type Nine, all the way out the Beagle Point and back. <laughs> that was um, I'm trying to remember. They're kind of a famous. Um, player by the name of uh, Dr. K and I don't know that he plays anymore but but he's uh, um, if you go back he was one of the primary organizers of the distance worlds expeditions active in the uh, in the science stuff that took place in game um, and I think actually probably has a real uh, a pedigree as a real astronomer and all that said I think he was one of the ones that uh, pioneered the idea of taking a uh, a Type 9 all the way out there and, and back. And one of the reasons was uh, Type 9, you can carry supplies, limpets uh, for uh, refuel and uh, repair and stuff like that, right? So, and this was, I think, before you were able to uh, make limpets, because now you can with materials that you mine up. Uh, so, yeah, you would see Type 9s occasionally, and it was always impressive. Uh, I always enjoyed seeing those guys. This is Beagle Point. This is what the galaxy looks like from Beagle Point, and that's the star at Beagle Point, right? At that, at this time, um, there are there were no outposts in Beagle Point. I think there is one now, uh, but at this point, all you got was a star, you know. You didn't even get a t-shirt. <laughs> you just got to see this really spectacular view of the Milky Way seemingly just as far away as it could possibly be. And of course, 65,000 light years away is Seoul. Man, you know, that doesn't make you homesick. Um, but yeah, lots of people have had this goal, is going out to uh, visit Beagle Point. That's kind of your, uh, you're an explorer, you've, you've been to Beagle Point. And then everything else you do is kind of, uh, well, everything else you do. And I think that's all the all those uh, screenshots I had lined up for us tonight. But yeah, that's kind of a summary of the of some of the other stuff that we've been up to here in, in the past couple of years. Always fun times. Good job. So I'm so close. Yeah, how are you doing at this point? Just five more jumps and I'll be there. Sweet. See? That worked out really well. Yeah, be glad I wasn't in my sidewinder. This would have been impossible. Yeah, for real. And I don't even have the package equipped that I usually I've got three setups for the Rasanata on board the carrier. My fighter my fighting setup, the mining setup, and my exploring setup. Uh huh. And sadly, I'm st I'm with my mining setup right now because I because I was planning on mining. <laughs> so you had to haul uh, that as you're making yeah. your jumps, yeah. Yeah, but if I had my, I'm pretty sure if I had my setup for my exploring and everything, I would have been there in a lot less jumps. So no, yeah, not really. Because Russ, the the Anaconda's got a really good jump range. So. Oh, it does absolutely. Oh, there's the start. I went back to the to the bar and I actually see one of the stars in the system out the window there. Kind of distant, but yeah, it's up there. Oh no, I I fibbed. That's actually the reflection of the light. <laughs> what even uh, is my jump range right now, anyway? Oh. Well. Current jump range forty nine point three light years. So what ship are you in right now? DBX. Oh okay. Unladen, fifty six sixteen. Yeah, that's currently nineteen. I remember light. you said that you had that guy up uh, north of a hundred, didn't you? At some point. Yeah, when I boosted off of that one neutron star, it got over two hundred. Well, 
let's see. One more stop. You know? Hey, by the way, while you were out there, did you see anything um, interesting about the area? Yeah, you know, we're in that uh, the vicinity of that globular cluster. Anything strike your eye? The next bookmark for the carrier jump is, for for me, nine jumps away. Uh, Jojo IBM C twenty four zero. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, it. I guess you're uh, looking at that through ne using neutron stars and such. Yeah, I've got one neutron star boost on it. Gotcha. Well, good. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That sounds about right, actually, with your with your jump range. Four hundred ninety nine point nine three light years. <laughs> Excellent. So that's got to be, uh, it's got to be you, Otis, that just, that's coming in now. My next jump is where the carrier is at. Cool. Excellent. Well, if Otis, I mean, yeah, if Otis is already there, you can probably go ahead and start the countdown. I should be. Well, somebody kind of. Uh, requested docking there, and I saw one of the. Uh... Yeah, no, I'm just waiting for little old Commander T O'Neill to come in and land. Yeah, he's almost here. Won't take long, and we'll have our. Last jump of the night. Yeah, what do we got right here? Ardent shovel. Ooh, there's a lot of bodies in this system that the carrier got in. Yeah, I know, right? Shovel. Yeah, I guess I guess I was in the Titan Nine, the mining ship I saw. That. So you can actually target that guy in there. Yeah. Ah, nice. All right, I'm coming in. Should be dropping out a little bit because they parked pretty close to the sun, actually. Yeah, the flight deck's faced away from it, you know, so we're, we're cooking the bottom. I'm just watching how my ship moves on the stream. Hello there. Hello there. Yeah, I recognize that ship. That's your DBX. You know what I think the neatest thing about the DBX is? Hmm. Is whenever you deploy the landing gear, it actually flexes the ship a little bit. Like yeah, it's got moving it's... parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there it went. 
Yeah, and I see the Connie's coming in. I've also noticed that whenever you land on a planet and you put your SRV out with this thing, it will actually jack itself up a little higher to give the SRV clearance to get out from under it. That's right. It, it is a tight fit. Yeah, I like the DBX. It's, it's a nice little ship. There you go. Cleaning the windows again. <laughs> of course. All germs. Look at that Connie over there. Yep, there he comes. Let me just deploy hard points. Yeah, I, cu I couldn't deploy mad. hard point. I couldn't deploy hard points if I wanted to. This thing's completely unarmed. <laughs> yeah. Don't pay any attention to him, Carl. He can't harm a flag. Oh yeah, he can. You haven't seen that engine exhaust. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I can't deny that. <laughs> yeah, buzz right down in front of him. That's right. You made it all this way only to get ran to my DBX. Now I'm gonna get out of the ship, go into the carrier, and go sit down in the seat. External contacts request docking. There you go. And I will. As soon as you're aboard, I'll begin the the next job. Well, this did turn out to be a bit of an adventure. So, did you find anything interesting on your uh, on your trip here, GNL? I'm really too interesting. I think the only interesting thing I saw was the the picture I threw in Discord with a really really bright sun. Okay, I'm gonna like I said, not, I'm not gonna feature that tonight, but uh, we'll probably have that next week. Let me look at that. O2 hangar. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, like that's as soon a, as I a, dropped... Yeah, that's a super giant, man. That's a super giant. Yeah, it blinded the heck out of me as soon as I dropped out. I was like, oh, God, I can't see... <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's wall, wall blue, blue super giant. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, I got high beam. Little... Yeah, high beam to the face. Is right. <laughs> Just a super massive white hole. <laughs> yeah, other than, that, other than that, it was a lot of dead systems, honestly, so nothing really... Of note. Kind of sad, though. Well, it, space is big, and the vast majority of it is that, right? It's yeah. The the interesting stuff is rare, and that's that's why you feel you know some accomplishment when you actually do uh, come across it. So let's see here. Otis T, you're you're both aboard. Yep. Okay. Let me confirm this is our last jump. Jirojo, IBM, we're going to IBM C240. So I expect there to be business machines there. That's it. Hey, Otis. Yes. Uh, on the Discord, is our uh, screenshots different sizes? Uh, let me look here. Because I know our monitors are different sizes and everything, so I was wondering if the screenshots would actually be in the monitor size, or if they defaulted to a... These are a little thinner. Yeah, they're to the monitor size. You know, whatever your hey. client client size is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you too. It's like, yeah, to hell with this. I'm sitting down right now. Seatbelt on. That's right. Trace yeah, I don't, for our position. <laughs> I'm not going to wait for the timer. Screw that. I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I don't blame you. After, the, after that bit of a uh, bit of sidetrack, yeah. <laughs> oh lord. No, I finally got my um uh, my new monitor and everything, and it's the uh, thirty four inch uh, curve monitor. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That does explain why we're seeing the uh, yeah. Okay, I see it. Um, yeah, I just posted of it in the Discord, even though it's not Elite Dangerous related. But well, still, yeah, it kind of is. Everybody's uh, you know, game setup is uh, is definitely game related. I also got a new graphics uh, card to match the uh, the monitor. I got a thirty seventy. Thank God for that. Oh yeah, no kidding. That's good stuff. So we're about. Um, 
Oh, 50 minutes or so away from our last jump of the night. Uh, we have our uh, recovered our, our wayward pilot, Tia Neal. Please have no more luck. Let's have, yeah, let's yeah. have no more luck stories. I don't need no more of those. <laughs> well, at least you know it. You know, it's not unrecoverable. You know where we're headed. And, uh, your, uh, your Connie has enough uh, legs on it that it, you can get there reasonably quickly. So. The only thing that would have made it that bad, I guess, is if like the very before the very first jump, if it dropped me, and then and we didn't realize it until like we was already at the final destination, and I'd have to do all those jumps, then it would be. I I think the your only danger of getting dropped like that if you're actually online, uh, in the carrier at the time. So yeah, it's 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 got to be a bug associated with that transition, and I I haven't I know that they corrected a bug. Uh, about uh, commanders getting dropped. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Uh, the the owner of the carrier getting dropped during some uh, transitions like that. But I didn't know it was happening to players too. Yeah, the owner owner of the carrier gets dropped, and the and the carrier stays behind, but all of the people end up in the future seat. You know, like that. That'd be funny. <laughs> All sorts of crazy, you know, Carl's like, hey, no more high score. You do not have landing clearance because I don't have a pad for you to land on. Eleven oh. minutes. So it does look like uh, Eve referred to um, the the new live stream that the Elite Dangerous community guys are doing uh, weekly now. It, it's kind of during the day on Thursday, uh, so it's, it can be difficult to catch. And by the way, they're doing Twitch drops, so you know if you want paint jobs and stuff like that, that'd be a good opportunity. The, um, the but and then they, added they the uh, right. For like the three different uh, it's getting late enough. I actually forgot the point. Oh, right. <laughs> um, I, I wish they actually had an option. To say I just I just remember that their in-game uh, stuff they're doing it with a with a fleet carrier of their own um, called the the Final Phoenix, I think. So they're jumping to the community uh, goals and, you know, just poking at them a bit and, uh, you know, playing the game and offering, offering some commentary about uh, the goings on. And it's, it's been interesting, you know, to see how the, uh, the story back in the bubble has begun to heat up and get a bit more intense. In particular, there seems to be some uh, drama going on with the Guardian sites. Uh, and I'm wondering and I'm wondering exactly uh, what impact that might have on us way out here because one of the things that's happening back home is uh, more and more brazen incursions by the Thargoids uh, oh hold on Echo decided to sorry Echo no, stop my, my voice assistant woke up. So, I'm wondering what sort of uh, impact that might have on us out here. I don't think it's likely that we're going to run into Thargoids or a car. Okay, it decided to play music. Hold on a second. Echo, stop. <laughs> okay. So be it. Um, but we are carrying uh, most of many of our ship fits have um, some of them may have guardian gears like the guardian frameshift drive boosters or power plants or whatnot um, so there's, there's a very real possibility that if we do actually run into uh, Thargoids that they may not be impressed with, with the carrier or those on it and decide to do something and then the guardian tech 
you know, if, if indeed the guardians are waking up, you know, what happens to the, all this technology that we've built based on their stuff? You know, is it going to start misbehaving? And we're way out here, really no way to you know, turn it off. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious if that's going to have any impact on us, but I, I doubt it. It sounds like it's all going to have impact on the systems there in the core. Unless there's something out here that you know we happen to stumble on, it's possible. But you know, so is, so is winning the lottery. So I don't see us winning the lottery anytime soon. Either. Jesus, do you know which one you're you seem to have a uh, a knack for that. A knack for what? Sorry, I was winning the lottery. Oh, <laughs> I have to. I don't know. I have really. I don't know how to describe my luck because I don't even know how you would describe that. Black Adder of Doom. I feel like you're, you're like '80s and '90s cartoon villain. That's my luck. What monster was that from? Are you you twirling your mustache over there? Is that what's going on? Yeah. If only I had a cat in my lap that I could menacingly pet. That's right. Curse you, he man. Oh, God. <laughs> Dear Neil, the curse of space. These are the lost voyages of Teal Neil. That actually might be a good uh, title for your uh, uh, for your section. That's right. <laughs> Probably. I didn't get I didn't get kicked off the bus. I fell off. So these are the voyages of the well, lost voyages of TNU. I could see that as being a thing. I'm gonna say that wouldn't have been a bad idea. If it took me a lot longer to get back to the carrier and everything, or if I just waited till you did the final jump, I could have made like a little small series about me just taking my time to catch up really. Yeah. Taking nursing screenshots, save them and everything, like a little photo journey of my trip back to the home. <laughs> well, don't tempt fate, you might still get a chance. Oh gosh, please hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you had sleep on Would it, right? certainly have been interesting to see that again. Uh, yeah, like if it happened again, I would just be like, okay, apparently it's not my thing to join y'all on this journey. That's right, yeah, yeah. Just not the normal way, I guess. Black Adder. Curse you, Black Adder. Foiled again. I do like their error messages. That, that, there's, there's always a little bit of style in the, the orange side one the Black Adder, etc. Yeah, the little, the, the little names I got from them is pretty interesting. I like it. Yeah. It's a lot more interesting than just like random error codes they come up with. Is that a name from um, Do you guys remember um, the Commodore Amiga? Or is, or is that uh, going back too far? I have memories of it. I remember reading about it. Don't actually remember ever seeing one, but I know of them. Yeah, I know Otis played, played Elite before me, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing my age. Um, so the Commodore Amiga had, when it had an error, so, you know, system uh, system fault or what have you, uh, those were guru meditation errors. And you'd have this little red block um the system error has occurred, guru meditation, and random number, right? Uh, given the, actually, not random, the memory address that the error occurred in. So it was guru meditations on the Amiga. I always loved that. That was great. So I'm warning you, if you see a big red block that says guru meditation show up on the glass here, right? <laughs> I'll take that as a, I'll take that as a note. That's right. <laughs> so how much time we got left on that countdown? Uh, what are we looking at? About four minutes. I hope you're on the ship. I am. Okay. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know where he was at. I didn't see him next to me or anything like that. So. Well, he's back there playing cards with engineering or something. It's just like... He's on a winning drink. He doesn't want to give up.
That's exactly what I'm doing, yes. back, running back. Okay, just in time. Indeed. Is this your first flight? <laughs> Yeah, hopefully it's my first one that I don't get lost in a, a journey in space. <laughs> yeah, I, like I really like how, how I like how the character models have the head turning for whenever you look around. Yeah, that that's a nice touch. It, it, Hi there. That's right. I like how y'all have matching jackets, but they're different colors. Do we? I, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. And from my angle, it looks like it. Yeah, I think I got the, like the blue explorer thing. And, and it, oh, this everything's red makes it go faster. You know, walk. So yeah. I've got my armor because like I'm trying to. I've always got my warrior. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've just got light. I've just got light armor on the parts that need it. I just got you know, heavy armor on because I elbows, to... knees, stuff like that. You know, general explorer stuff. Can't have scraped knees out on the frontier. Right. I have the heavy armor from the fact that when uh, they first allowed us to actually do ground missions and everything, I just I wanted to do like fighting bounty hunting missions. And you can't really do it with any other kind of armor. Yeah, that's true. If you, we we have the frontier uh, equipment shop back there. You know, if you need to like get an armor suit or something. I've already helped myself to one back there already because I needed an Artemis suit. I probably need to do that. Yeah. I'll do that after this jump. Hopefully, if I make it to the destination. Yeah, no good. We will find I feel out like, soon. I feel like if it doesn't let me get there this time, if it does the same thing again, like from now on, I'll just like not be online when the jumps happen and then just get online. Or, yeah, and, and if it does do it again, then, then we need to kind of set up a bug report for the Frontier and say, yeah, check out this character. Somehow he jinxes the jumps. Yeah. <laughs> My luck, my luck. If you look at my D and D character sheet, is actually in the negatives. <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but it happened. <laughs> Style. Thirty seconds. And if you look to your right, you'll see one of the crew members mysteriously disappeared. Yeah, I need, to, I need to. I need to see. You know what's going to happen to TNL when we when we do this? Yeah. Everybody, so watch me. There, I'm gonna... <laughs> Where'd he go? Like you just see the lightning go through the viewing screen, slap me in the face, and I disappear in a puff of smoke. Huh. Like that is interesting. You know, the, fla the flashlights for on foot are instanced, apparently. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Okay, that one was... Uh, yikes. Okay, checking, checking. Uh, I haven't disappeared yeah, yeah, yet. I, I, I see people. I see dead people. That's right. No strange effects, no Boovian mysteries. Well, I mean, you there could you be seeing dead people. Ain't you ever watched Event Horizon? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to quickly drop out of this part of the game and go over to open play and see who all's taken off. Nice. Well, 
Genial, I'm glad that you managed to survive that trip. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Excellent. Well, we are here. Yeah, let's, let me take a look at the map. And that'll give us a kind of a view. Where's my navigation? Oh, here we go. Of where we are in relation to the bubble at this point. All right. Zooming out. Zooming out. Yeah, we're we're pretty good ways. Currently taking set four. We are five thousand light years out from the bubble. Oh, the bubble is all of these systems in this area over here. Where it's kind of busy. That was our first stop. Here's our second. And this trail to the north of us is the bubble to Colonia route. So we're getting further and further away from it. Probably a couple of thousand light years from it at this point. So yeah. And a whole bunch of stars around here. Lots and lots of stars. That's what I like to see. Hopefully fi folks find something new, interesting, and beautiful. I don't think there's going to be lack of opportunity. What's, what's nice, what dense star field here. Screenshot! <laughs> I saw nobody out there. Odd. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I, I figure there are probably uh, up to 20 people with us, and it, you know, not all of them are necessarily going to be awake at this time. It's it's what um, middle of the morning, om almost um, dawn in the UK right now. So yeah, it's 3:41. That time that they got up in the top right is GMT. That's right. Yeah. So there we go. Jump two. Jump Sequence 2 is complete. Well, folks, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, those of you that uh, that stayed, even those that got dropped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming along. And we will uh, explore and see what we have to see next week. Hold on. Somebody, somebody's there. I guess that's the, the Connie. Did you take out Tenio? No, I'm looking at the uh, suits. There. It's me. Oh, okay. So you get you came back. I see. Hey, y'all are parked side by side now. Are we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Marcus here has mostly been hanging out on the carrier, kind of running things, and I've got an alt that I've been out there exploring with. So it's all good stuff. This has been an interesting journey. Yes, it is. I enjoy these. Let me get him in the uh, in the bar where you can. Hold on. Is there something visible from the bar? Oh, that's a, that's uh, Canis Canis Minor, probably the distance there. Like, yeah, I wonder if you can see me through the windows of the bar. I don't know. Come on over. Let's see. Let me find the carrier. There it is. Hey, Oracle. How you doing, bud? Oracle almost came over to say hi again. The bar is on the... Well, I see one of the... Uh, is it fooling me again? Thank you. I keep thinking that's a star. I am kind of curious whether, whether you'll be visible. But I think you should be, given that you can... I hear you. I hear a ship. Yeah, I see you. You just passed by. Did that drifting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Deep space drifter. Let's see, where exactly is the bar on this thing? Oh, it's right there on top. Yeah, there you are. You, you got it. I see you moving around in there. Yep. So apparently, yeah, you have full visibility in through these windows. That's, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, and the lights work and illuminate the interior. Nice. Yeah, 
Nice bit of detail. Can I target you? I don't know if you want to try that out. No, he, he has been able to target me in the past. Oh. And it's just like you can target ground targets. And that, that's what you're looking at here. Let me clean these windows off for you. Oh. And he's off. <laughs> Alrighty. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and close out the stream. Again, thanks to everybody. And... We'll be here one week, and we'll do it again next week. So, folks, have a good evening. And we're signing off here.